TJ, are you crazy? I'm gonna sleep you in the first fight. I hope you know you lucked up, but you fucked up. Agreeing to the rematch, cause I'm about to beat your ass. At UFC 227, the snake is going down. Then I move down and fight DJ and be the number one pound for pound. You only took my title cause I had a bad back, but this time when I fight you, you gon' get that ass waxed. Hold up, they call me no love, and they know that I'm a motherfucking soldier. I smoke that kush like I'm a motherfucking stoner, and if you ain't know it, motherfucker, now you know what. And before we go, shout out to all the full-time MMA white belts that have hit the subscribe button. Make sure you also hit the bell right next to it so you get notified every time we upload a new video. This is the hardest work. Despacito. <laughs> hey, ¿qué pasó, amigos? Cierra la boca, puto. Españolitos en escuela. You know they call me Mr. Moreno. My submissions are hot like they jalapenos. As the Mexican fans will tell you that they know. Sergio Perez is faker than homemade peso. This will better put his respect on my jujitsu. If I catch you slipping, I am gonna submit you. Heard you got a car bomb put in your Hummer. Oh wait, shit, never mind, that's your brother. Efo, you can be fucked up, bese. This big Sergio fool, they call me the phenom puto. Hey, you call me faking now, it's time to beat your culo. Brandon Moreno is a pinchy pudo. Chupin me huevos when you chupin my nudo. Pinchy pudo. Hey, fuck Brandon and fuck it, you get too. He ain't about to choke me out, I'm about to choke this dude. He thinks he can submit me up in Mexico City. I'ma do him like police did and leave this boy shitty, then I'm gone. First things first, I'll be the newest champion after I beat Amanda Nunes. I want the crown, bitch, I'm the queen, you know I do this. I leave him lying on the ground because I do this. It's Valentina Shevchenko, quick to beat a bitch if you ain't no. Ain't no way to win, so come and get your face swole. Thanks, ho. After I get the belt, I'm getting bankrolled. And Range Rovers ripping and whipping to getting makeovers. This the takeover. In our first fight, I really won. If you ain't think so, this time it will be done. Whoa there, hold on, go there, bitch, you about to piss me off. If you think you won that first fight, then you can kiss these balls. You fucked around and got a rematch with Amanda. Want a rematch with Amanda, then you're gonna need the hanger. Cause Amanda fuck around and beat a bitch till she can't stand up. You think Amanda's fuck around, then why don't you go ask Misha's fan club? Or how about Ronda Rousey? I break everyone around me's wheel. In the cage, I pound and kill him when I'm walking out and still. Here comes Wonder Boy to Liverpool so proudly. He's got to shut till up, cause he done called him out. See, nothing much to say when you know you're gonna fuck till up. Yeah, yeah. Wonder Boy. Your karate's too much for his power. Now it's time for me to tell you the story about a young cocky man, arch rival and nemesis of Wonder Boy, with powers comparable to Wonder Boy. What powers you ask? How about the powers of Muay Thai? That do anything for you? That's devastation, Holmes. How about the power to speak three languages? Fluently at that. I done did a lot of drugs in my day, yeah I said it, but I'm still gonna kick your ass, Gustafson, I hope you 
ready when I got into the crash I ain't know the bitch was pregnant But they treat me like a murderer So motherfucker critic Bitch I'm ready to fight And we can fight till the death I'll hit your ass with the right Then with the right and the left Then kick you right in the chest And have you fighting for breath And then I'll turn the pressure up When you would try to get rest Leave you no time to adjust Then you I'm coming for the title So quit hiding your necks Because I'm right at your neck Yeah you can try and fight Lesnar But when you fight him what's next? That's right, I'm the best. At UFC 232, I'll get my title instead. What the fuck is going on, full time family? It's gonna be a good show. Salute to everybody that is in the chat already. I see my boy Tom Thier. I see Cam Murphy, the Irish Queen. I see Michael Curry, 626D for Dank. Finally catching one of these live. What's going on, Terry Crow? Tom Thier says, yo, you feel what I'm saying? Start collaborating with other YouTubers to get your numbers. You feel what I'm saying? I feel what you're saying, and I know what you're saying, but honestly, I don't give a fuck about my YouTube numbers. I don't give a fuck about, you know, the channel growing and becoming some, bah, I don't care. I'm not coming for Ariel Helwani's neck. I'm just here with the family, bro. I'm just here with you guys. Until you guys leave, I'm here. Once you motherfuckers go away, I'm gone. This YouTube shit changed over the last year. It ain't about collaborating with other YouTubers. That's just shit they're feeding YouTubers to make them realize you could, you know, like, this is how, yeah, yeah, we changed our algorithms and completely fucked over more than half of YouTube, but if you collaborate, maybe you can introduce yourself into their 50 fans and maybe one of them will come over and say hi. Like, no, no. Um, I'm not really worried about getting my numbers back to where they used to be. I wasn't collaborating back in the day, and my shit was jumping. It's all got to do with YouTube's algorithm change and the potential shadow ban. Whatever the fuck happened, happened. And if I go do two shows with Fight With Friends, that's not going to make it reverse. You know what I'm saying? So I do appreciate that, though. Some people have been asking, yo, what's up? What's going? Where'd the numbers go? What happened with, with you know the channel and, and the amount of views we used to get? Bro, it's YouTube. That's, it's not just me either. It's not a personal thing. It happened across the platform. People are not reaching the same amount of subscribers. Subscribers don't get notifications. All type of shit. So this YouTube shit is super secondary. Like, you can't afford anymore to focus and dedicate time into YouTube unless you're already, like, rich or something. Like, if you ain't got shit better to do, if you don't need money, any of that, you can sit around and dick around on YouTube all day. But if you're just, you know, you can't use this as like a part-time employment, another job, nothing like that. So it's just for fun now. Um, but either way, I do appreciate the uh, feedback and stuff like that. Let me get the chat on screen, man, because it's not on screen again. We're going to fix that, though. You guys can see at the bottom of the screen and some of the things we're going to be talking about. UFC, versus, um, UFC 232, John Jones versus Alexander Gustafson. We're going to get, oh, right, there's the pop-out chat. We're going to talk about that. We've talked about it a little bit, but I think we could talk about this for like the next week and I wouldn't get tired of it because I still can't believe how this went down. And honestly, what's crazy, it's not even the main events, not even the picograms. I could literally, I could rant on John Jones, you know, having a fucking dirty system. Or, or, or picograms in his system and knocking out Alexander Gustafson. Like, I really could probably dedicate a whole show and, like, just go anti John Jones. And I wouldn't have a problem with that because, I mean, I get it, John Jones, bro. Like, I, I, I honestly would feel terrible if he's somehow fucking innocent and he's literally just the guinea pig of USADA and he's been targeted and what the fuck ever. If some crazy John Jones conspiracy was out there, which I don't think it is. I would feel for him. I know there are coincidences, and I know some whatever. It happens rarely. This doesn't feel like one of those situations at all. I feel like, and if I'm wrong, like I said, I'm not trying to judge anybody. I'm just giving you my opinion. I feel like John Jones is a dirty fighter. I'm not saying I feel like he's a bad person. I don't care about that. If he is, he is. That's not me. I'm not John Jones, and he's not affecting me with his life choices. He's not fucking me up whenever he... Doug goes and fucks up his legs. You know, so I don't care about the personal judgment. I'm talking about level playing field, USADA, UFC shit. Only UFC. John Jones just seems to be a dirty fighter, bro. And like I said, we could talk about that. But that's not what blew our mind. That's not what made us go crazy. 
even though, like I said, bro, we might be talking about that shit, because, uh-uh, I'm not buying this Picogram shit, I know a lot of people aren't either, I'm buying the Picogram shit, I'm sure that's how much is in it, what I'm not buying is the no re-ingestion, I'm not buying the fucking, um, no performance, it didn't help his performance at all, okay, yeah, I'm that fucking dumb, right, John Jones, doesn't finish Gustafson in the first fight. Doesn't finish DC in the first fight. Before USADA. Comes back after USADA. Looks shitty against OSP. Next fight. Knocks out Daniel Cormier. Fails the drug test. I mean if we're just looking at this fucking on paper. This shit don't add up. Before USADA. John Jones is the GOAT. After USADA. He looks like trash against OSP. And then fails the drug test. After he knocks out Daniel Cormier. John Jones only fought three times after USADA has came into play. Didn't look great against OSP. Knocked out Daniel Cormier, failed the drug test. Knocked out G uh, um, Gustafson, failed the drug test. He's only fought two times after USADA, or three times, and two of them he failed the drug test. And he was the GOAT before then. What the fuck is people missing? And, the, and then the whole details, the devil in the details, the fucking... But it's just a picogram, but it's, I don't give a fuck... If it's one picogram or 60 picograms in an uh, uh, ocean-sized swimming pool. <laughs> an ocean-sized swimming pool. I don't care. Can anybody else have picograms? Is that good enough for anyone else? Can anybody else main event a card and get a whole fucking fight card moved? Because what? What was the reason they said it wouldn't be right to John Jones? When did we start doing shit in the UFC? Because it's what's right. <laughs> John Jones doesn't deserve this. What? Whatever the fuck he did in his past. Even if it was Chinese cocaine or dick pills. Even if John Jones never, ever intentionally cheated, ever. If he's... Not a sociopath. If he is a God-fearing man. If he is innocent. Whatever Chinese cocaine your innocent ass did. Or gas station dick pills. You're bad. That's your fucking bad. No one told you to go to 7-Eleven and get the green Rhino 24-7s. No one told you to go to the Chinese plug. You gotta get the high power shit. Or and, and, and that's all just spe and that's just okay if we're buying everything, but even then, bro, whatever the fuck it was in those gas station dick pills or Chinese tainted cocaine, whatever the fuck it was. And by the way, you're giving Asian plugs a bad uh, a name. Asian Connect ain't too happy with John Jones right now. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, bro, what the fuck ever was in those dick pills, if that's what it is, right, is pulsing through your system two years later, <laughs> or, or when, when, whatever was pulsing, it was the Chinese cocaine when he fought DC, right, it wasn't the dick pills, that shit was too good, <laughs> it was too good, because he, the only way John Jones is completely, I feel like, innocent in this, is if, okay, completely innocent, never taking steroids, it was the dick pills and the Chinese cocaine. Well, it's like, okay, well, how much fucking steroids was in that cocaine that this shit can't come out of your system? You know, it's like, I've told you guys this story, I, I had to go on diversion once for smoking weed, I had to quit smoking weed. But I smoked so much fucking weed before that point, and I'm a bigger dude. That shit's not out of my system quick. So I had to go on diversion and they give you one month to get clean from weed. After a month, my levels were still high and I wasn't smoking weed. Because I smoked so much fucking weed. And the reason they allowed me to stay in the program, even though I failed the time limit, didn't pass the one month time limit. They said every single week we test you, we see your levels going down and down and down. So when your levels hit zero, that's when we'll start your time. That's when my month started. Whenever all the THC was out of my system, that's when my month started. If I would have failed another drug test after I was at zero, 
And I said, no, it's just because I smoked so much weed, the shit popped back up. You don't have to be a fucking USADA rocket steroid scientist to realize that's bullshit. They're not going to say, oh, you just smoked so much weed, some just popped back in your system after you were clean. And that's when I was smoking weed. I wasn't taking Chinese cocaine that was laced with a little bit of THC. And now there's so much THC in my system, it can't come out. If there's so much fucking turbine on your system that can't you can't get clean in 18 months, this wasn't tainted cocaine we're talking about. There's no way you just do a fucking... Some cocaine over the weekend. Who knows? I was going to say one night. Fuck it. Maybe you did it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday because the party wasn't over. It don't matter if you did that much cocaine. Unless that shit is pure turbinol, there's no way turbinol was in your system 18 months later. And you're still popping for the shit. And you're allowed to fight. I mean, so I'm not impressed with John Jones' third round TKO. I'm not impressed with him knocking out Daniel Cormier, and I'm not impressed with his OSP fight. I'm not impressed with John Jones since USADA, bro. I don't care who he's knocking out. I don't care what Jeff and Dana are telling us, bro. I'm not impressed with the dude who's allowed to fight with fucking turbinol in his system. And I don't care if it's a picogram. No one else can do it, right? Okay, then that's all I need to know. That's just one part of the weekend. Okay, John Jones knocked out Gustafson somehow. Like, that's all overlooked. It's all overlooked. Because Amanda Nunes knocked out Cyborg in the first round. I haven't heard one person say, what the fuck? How did John Jones do that to Gustafson? Ring rust clearly don't exist in the first. God damn. Alexander Gustafson gave John Jones his hardest fight to date. Before this... <laughs> so crazy isn't it weird John Jones toughest fights uh, coming into the rematch he fails the drug test and just knocks him out mm. no re-ingestion hmm. <laughs> guys oh they know you know most fighters and there ain't nothing wrong with it you know coming up the hard heads motherfuckers you know niggas that like to fight they usually don't like to put their head in the books you know what I'm saying? Usually, they, you know, motherfucking fighters, they ain't the bright, not all of them. There's motherfuckers like Carlos Gondi, Dominic Cruz, that could be brain surgeons. But a majority, we'll say 70%, they ain't the fucking sharpest knives in the drawers. Maybe even the fans. What the fuck are we watching, right? But boy, even us, even us dumbass MMA fighters and fans, we ain't buying this shit, bro. Okay. Like, I don't even know what you do about it, though. There's not really shit you can do about it, but kind of just take it, right? If you're, you, what are you going to do? Go to Bellator? Okay. Well, you're under contract, first of all, so you better fight your contract out. And the fact that we know you want to go to Bellator, you're getting some tough-ass fights. You're about to be fighting fucking Islam, Makachev, Kamaru, Usman. I don't give a fuck if they're not in your division. You're getting ragdolled if you want to leave the UFC, homie. Woo! Bad spot to be in. So, yeah, man. Weird situation with the whole, I mean... That whole John Jones, Pico Graham shit, but that's over. And honestly, John Jones should probably be thanking Amanda Nunes. Honestly, he probably should. Maybe even Cyborg a little bit, because boy, did that take the spotlight off of him this weekend. Whoo! I didn't even. I literally, until we started this stream up, I wasn't even thinking about John Jones. I would literally want to talk about Amanda Nunes and Chris Cyborg. I still can't believe it. Mixed with a little Kayla Harrison, of course, because I've never been a cyborg hater. I've always been part of cyborg. I've never been a cyborg simp now. I've never been one of those. I've never been diehard. I don't think I'm diehard for anybody like that. Maybe Kayla Harrison. <laughs> but <laughs> I, loading, loading into this stream, bro, I thought we were about to be talking about Nunez and, and cyborg. What? I just thought, oh yeah, we got to talk about the main event. And, oh yeah, John Jones just finished Gustafson in the third round. What the fuck did we just see this weekend? I think everybody was so shocked that Amanda Nunes knocked out Cyborg in 51 seconds. You know, I'm just now starting to, that's why now I'm thinking about John Jones. I'm just now coming down from the Amanda Nunes knockout. Like, I couldn't, my brain's been like locked. 
But now, let's think about it. Let's talk about it. John Jones, in the first fight, Gustafson put John Jones in the hospital. Be a good time for a transition, which I think we're going to do. The first fight, Gustafson put John Jones in the hospital. The second fight, John Jones fails the drug test and knocks him out in the third round. How much, how, how simpler does it get? The first fight, there was some issues with John Jones, and, and, and this is something that gets completely looked under the radar. It wasn't even on my radar to one of my real life friends who trains MMA brought it up. And yes, I'm going to UFC Wichita with him, his wife. It's going to be a fucking family affair, bro. We're rolling deep to UFC Wichita. This is UFC's Kansas debut. Less than an hour away? Do you know how fucking deep I'm going to be in that thing? I'm going to be in that motherfucker deeper than John Jones with some Chinese cocaine and three hookers. Fuck you talking about. I can't wait. But my real life, he trains MMA, was preparing for his first amateur fight, threw out his shoulder, dislocated his shoulder, didn't have his first amateur fight, but he does train. He was like, bro, you know that when John Jones first fought DC, there was some discrepancies with this drug test too, right? I was like, damn, I didn't remember that. He was like, yeah, you got to go back and look at it. It wasn't, I don't think it was like a full-fledged flag because they didn't overturn the result. But there were some discrepancies with like John Jones' testosterone levels in the first DC fight. First DC fight before USADA. So, before USADA, John Jones ain't even got the shit that's good enough to finish these dudes. Before USADA, John Jones couldn't finish Gustav Center DC. After USADA, he finishes them both, but he fails the drug test. What the fuck are we doing here? What the fuck are we doing here? I don't know, but I really don't care. That's why I'm not focusing on John Jones, but I'm just laying that all out. I don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm cool on the dude. I'm not walking around wondering when's John Jones' next fight. If he fights fucking DC, I hope DC wins. But I'm honestly not super high on John Jones right now. No pun intended. I don't really care. I'm more high on Amanda Nunes right now. Because this bitch is the motherfucking GOAT. And there ain't no asterisk right now. There's no ifs, there's no ands, there's no buts, there's no picograms, there's no turbinol. We're talking about a true GOAT right now. Amanda Nunes. Pound for, we're talking about not even arguable. We're talking number one pound for pound. It's not close. At one, it's Nunes. At two, it's Nunes. At three, it's Shevchenko. At four, it's Cyborg. But Nunes is one spot ahead of both of them. Leave that two spot blank. It goes Nunes, nobody, Shevchenko, Cyborg. Because nobody's fucking with Nunes. Sorry, Shevchenko. Sorry, Cyborg. None of y'all have what it takes to fuck with Nunes. None of you. And, and I'm I'm not anti-cyborg. I'm not anti-Shevchenko. I love both of them. I put respect on their names. They are phenomenal fighters. But they're not as phenomenal as Amanda Nunes. Neither one of them. Don't make me draw that line in the sand. Because boy, I tell you what. <laughs> Amanda Nunes. Yeah, yeah, she's just better than both of them. And it's clear. It's you know, people talk about Amanda, oh, she doesn't have the skill, it's because she's strong. What the fuck are you guys talking? Please, I hate when people say that, bro. They do the same thing to Jessica and Draj. Oh, she doesn't have any skill, it's brute force. Okay, hate some fucking more. Jessica and Draj doesn't have the fucking skill. If you want to talk about not having the skill, we should look more at a different Jessica. Let's look at Jessica I for a second. Jessica I... Was zero and four at bantamweight when she left the division. She she was on a four fight losing streak at one thirty five. She went down to one twenty five and she hasn't lost a fucking fight. And she was trash at fucking bantamweight. Trash. I'm talking Angela McGonagall levels of trash. I'm talking no one gave a 
fuck about Jessica I at Bantamweight. They were wondering when was Bellator going to knock on her door and were they? Or was she going to invict or retiring? Nobody thought about her as a top 15 fighter. She's about to challenge for the title at 125. So is is it because Jessica I is just too strong? Is it because she's so strong? Oh, she's just overpowering the flyweights and she's got no skill. No. You know who has more skill than Jessica Andrade? I mean, Jessica I? Jessica Andrade. And oh, by the way. Oh, it's going to get so fun in 2019. Whoo. Rose, Valentina, duck your motherfucking tacos. It might not be a good year. And I, Valentina, the only person she needs to be ducking from is Amanda Nunes because you don't want that smoke, sweetie. You don't want it at 135. And you damn show sure don't want it at 145. Okay? Okay? If I'm Amanda Nunes and anybody fucking mentions Valentina Shevchenko's name, if anyone mentions the bullet arsenal gun, I'm fucking saying 145 pounds. I'm going to say, you know what? You guys think Valentina beat me in those fights? I tell you what. I'm Amanda Nunes. I will fight Antonina Shevchenko and Valentina Shevchenko in the same night at 145 pounds. Shit just got real. Whew, shit just got real, right? Yeah, but but it's, it's that fucking real. You guys remember in the lead up to the... Oh, gosh. In the lead up to the cyborg fight, she was training with... With... Um, Valentina Shevchenko. And, you know, that's always dope. Two of the greatest fighters training with each other. Clearly, they should have had Amanda Nunes there if you really want to train with the GOAT. But either way, I still got to ask this question. What can somebody teach you that lost to the person you're fighting? You know what I'm saying? That's like, that's like, let's say, Brock Lesnar, right? He's about to fight Daniel Cormier, or whoever fights Daniel Cormier next. Let's say John Jones. Not John Jones, he already beat him. Daniel Cormier is the heavyweight champion. Let's say it's Stipe Miocic, who cares? Whoever fights DC next. It's like <coughs> DC's next opponent bringing in Rumble Johnson. It's like, bro, I already beat him twice. Why would you bring him to train for me so he can show you how to lose to me? Because honestly, and yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty, so... But what is Valentina going to show Cyborg for Nunes? She clearly can't show you how to beat her. She can't do that. Nobody can beat Amanda Nunes, so who's going to show you how to beat her? There's one person, but you guys don't want to hear that. There's one person that can show you at least maybe some weaknesses in, in Nunes' game. But it's her teammate, so... Eh, that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Kayla Harrison, she's been training day in, day out with Amanda Nunes. She might know one or two things, and she's probably a little bigger than both of these chicks. <laughs> Y'all don't realize Kayla Harrison is still a problem. She's even more of a problem now. Kayla Harrison is even more of a problem now. We know she's training with the GOAT. It's not, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. And by the way, if Amanda Nunes ever decided to be a crayonch and turn on American top team and like go back to Brazil, like, you know what, fuck American top team. I'm going to train with Cyborg. Boy, that would be one of the dumbest things she could do. But if she like turned, I mean, they, I mean, they call in Brazil, they call Amanda Nunes a traitor. So if Amanda Nunes, those traitor character traits, those traitor traits, if those come out and she turns on Kayla Harrison, Kayla Harrison might have to, you know what I'm saying, do that, but other than that, we're not going to, we're not, man, I, I really don't want to do that, so I'm definitely not going to lead the charge, we don't need to be talking about no Kayla Harrison versus no Amanda Nunes, we don't need to do that, they're teammates, you guys. Only reason we would ever need to even consider that fight is if Amanda Nunes 
just completely switched up on American Top Team. <laughs> but the one of the reasons that it's on, one of the only reasons I sort of entertain that fight, Nunez and Harrison, the only reason, of course, having some fun with the crayons thing. <clears throat> but the only reason is because I know Kayla Harrison's motivation. The only reason is the whole reason I've been big on Kayla Harrison this whole time. It's not because I'm fucking some Kayla Harris simp and I just scroll her Instagram and like her pictures with the heart emojis. No, I don't do that. I don't think I've ever been on her Instagram. But it's because she wants to be the greatest of all time. And that's exactly how she got her two-time Olympic medals in judo. It's because she was training with Ronda Rousey when she was younger than Ronda Rousey, and Ronda Rousey got all the spotlight, and she got the bronze medal, and she, Kayla Harrison, how, how, said, how can I be the best? How can I surpass her? So when Ronda Rousey went up and became this bronze medalist, blah, 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 Kayla went and got the gold, and then she did it again. <clears throat> that's just showing where her motivation is, and she, that's what I've been saying this whole time. Coming into MMA. She said, I'm here to be the greatest. I'm not here to be a journey woman. I'm not here because I need the money. I'm not here because any of that shit. I'm here for the glory. I'm here to be the greatest fighter of all time. And with that, what, what do you think? Now that Cyborg is, you think she's done? You think Kayla Harrison's going to retire? Clearly you weren't watching on the 31st when she motherfucking... Who took Mario Sharneski to school? Domination. Kayla Harrison was throwing that girl around on her motherfucking back like it was a uh, first day of wrestling practice, and you got through in there with the varsity squad. Who throwing her around, boy? Just phenomenal performance from Kayla Harrison, and I knew going into the fight. We knew going into the fight what they were gonna say. We knew it. And they were going to say, oh, her record was three and four. How many amateur fights did she have, though? Yeah, they didn't pull that up. They didn't pull up the Moshin, Moriel, Charneski. <coughs> Kayla Harrison ain't out here fighting scrubs. Well, I mean, she might be technically a scrub, but not scrubs like most people when they first start fighting. Do me a favor. Oh, and this was, I had a perfect example. <coughs> Somebody fought their third pro fight, and no one gave any shits. Oh, 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 Deontay Wilder, that's who it was, bro. Some video got popped up on my suggested videos, and it was some dude talking about Deontay Wilder. Bro, do you realize, and I know Deontay Wilder's not an MMA fighter, but you can use this for anybody, because Deontay Wilder, I'm a casual boxing fan. They're talking about him like one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. This dude fucking, bro, Deontay Wilder is like six foot fucking eight. He fought like a five foot eight dude in this boxing like third fight. It was like a giant and the dude had a beer belly. It was literally Deontay Wilder versus like the fan in the front row that said he wanted to fight. But you know why no one gives a shit? Because it was his third pro fight. You know why? Let's go to Chris Cyborg. I don't need any cyborg liars in here for this next question. I need the people that are going to keep it real like your boy Big Full Time. I don't be on here just fucking lying and gassing nobody for relationships. I'm keeping it real. Chris Cyborg, sure dog. I need, I'm about to ask y'all a question. Well, I mean, she's not the GOAT anymore, but still the question. Who here? Anybody in the chat? And I'm talking live. When it was going? 2006. Who watched Chris Cyborg versus Chris Schroeder? January 2006 at Storm Samurai. There wasn't even no fucking Reddit MMA streams back then, so where'd you watch it? Who was watching Chris Cyborg versus Chris Schroeder? Oh, look. Look who Cyborg fought in her third pro fight. What the fuck I be talking about? Y'all want to fucking shit on Kayla Harrison. This is what gets me passionate and pisses me the fuck off. They act like they're blind. When, 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 when all you gotta do is look at your favorite fucking fighter. Anybody. We're gonna do this with John Jones, Daniel Cormier, your favorite fighter. Put your favorite fighter in the chat, please. Because we're putting their ass on the spot here. Chris Cyborg 
three and oh, whatever the fuck. Beastie, right? Oh, she's a beast. And she is, but I'm talking about back then at three and oh. Let's compare records. Let's compare goats. <coughs> Let's compare your goat to my goat. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but serious. Look, this girl had one pro fight and how many amateur fights? Oh, it's blank. No amateur fights. So this girl was a geek off the street, essentially. She didn't have a three and four. What's more impressive to you? Zero and zero or three and four? <coughs> <clears throat> if you were going to be fighting your first pro fight, you, whoever's listening, who would you rather fight? Somebody that has never fought pro or amateur ever, they've never fought, they're like you, brand new. Or would you rather fight someone that fought 11 amateur fights and 7 pro fights? They've got 18 fights under their fucking belt. And your third fight, man, what the fuck are we doing? Let me get Kayla Harrison on the motherfucking screen. For, ooh, you haters, it's not the day. What the fuck are we doing? You Harrison haters got to come on with it. You got to come a lot better. I'll take on a squad. Cyborg, the whole Cyborg Nation will fall to big full time if you make me draw this line in the sand. Don't make me do that, bro. Don't let the Harrison hate. Your favorite fighter's exposed. Look at this shit, you guys. Brittany Elkin! This is her first fight! This was Taylor Harrison's first fight. We just seen Chris Cyborg's third opponent. How much experience did she have? That was her third opponent in her third fight. Let's just check the first one for shits and giggles. And she lost it. So let's see who she lost to. Look at this! How are you going to explain this one? Cyborg took her first pro fight and lost to a bitch that had never fought in her life. Her first fight was Cyborg. Submitted her, went on to lose. She went 2-2 two two after that. Lost to Betch Cohea. This girl is the definition of can sauce. And guess what? When Cyborg fought her, she was 0-0. Zero and zero. Who did Cyborg fight next? Uh, Vanessa Porto. How, what was her record at the time she fought Cyborg? 3-1. and one. Okay, that's more impressive, right? 3-1. and one. That's impressive, right? Right, guys? Fucking right! Oh, I don't want to yell at the family, but the fucking haters! Am I right or not? Is fucking three and one impressive or no? Because I think it's impressive! Cyborg fought a fighter that was three and one in her second fight. Impressive! But guess fucking what? When we go over here to Joe's that motherfucking cotton, the number one head buster! Look at her record! Oh my shit! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one! And I'm saying she had fucking amateur fights! Now, god damn it! Y'all gonna stop with the Harrison hate! My bad, y'all. Y'all got me fucked up, though! How fucking easy, how fucking much of a racist or a fucking hater or a fucking big mother, what the fuck are you missing? Take your blindfolds off. Look at the future, look at the potential, look at the gold medals, look at the fight history, look at the fucking training team. What the fuck? Am I the fucking only one with eyes? Eight and two in her second pro fight. So Cyborg fought somebody that was zero and zero, and then three and one, and then zero and zero. Kayla went three and four, eight and two, three and fucking four. That's what you call experience. Motherfuckers want Kayla Harrison to fight Amanda Nunes in her second pro fight because they're scared of the potential. 
So whenever you fucking wonder why why is Full Time so passionate about this Kayla Harrison subject? Because there's so many clear fucking doubters. Clear fucking haters and bl it's, it's like it's not even I don't get it. It's like I it's, it's almost like I'm confused. What the fuck are people missing here? What are people missing? Is it because she has judo a judo background? People look at Kayla Harrison and they're like, "Oh, Ronda Rousey got knocked out." Judo. Oh, that means Kayla Harrison judo gonna get knocked out. So fucking simple. Oh, she judo knockout. Remember Ronda Rousey? She was judo knockout. You fucking numbskulls. If that's your position. If you think Kayla Harrison can't succeed because she trained judo. Oh, you're so fucking just sadly mistaken. Because what the fuck do you call Ronda Rousey before she got knocked out? Succeeding, right? So, it's, 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 it, this is just so easy, guys. It's just so easy. It's so easy. So, Ronda Rousey gets knocked out in 48 seconds, which means Kayla Harrison's going to get knocked out, right? Here comes the motherfucking baddest bitch of all time, Chris Cyborg. She lasts three more seconds than Ronda Judo Rousey. That's why I got to put Ronda Judo Rousey in there. Because people act like the reason Ronda got knocked out is because of her Judo. They act like the, the reason Ronda got knocked out wasn't because of her team or her coaching or her head movement or what the fuck ever. Kayla Harrison trains with the American top team, not Edmund fucking Tarverian. Ronda Rousey defended her title seven times with a bronze medal. Well, if you take a bronze and turn it, go, that, that sounds like about 14 title defenses for fucking Kayla Harrison in a division that's not established. Please tell me who. It's too easy. I'm off of this. I'm about to be off of this subject, you guys. That's not what this show's about. I'm just telling you, this shit is too easy. Kayla Harrison, Chris Cyborg, I mean, that fight is there in line potentially in the future. It's not absolutely necessary anymore. But the last thing I wanted to say about the whole Ronda Rousey, Kayla Harrison comparison. That kind of rhyme, Harrison comparison. The last thing is, Ronda Rousey still defended her title multiple times. I mean, we know that. And I, and I kind of got fucking sidetracked there. But regardless, I, I just don't see what people are missing. Ronda Rousey, Kayla Harrison, it's like, well, what are we seeing? You see Kayla Harrison come in the fight, intentionally moving her head. I, I want to know if anyone has went back and watched the Josette Cotton fight. It's almost like Kayla Harrison was moving her head so much intentionally. She knows everyone's looking for it. She was literally out there fucking... Like, banging her head like she was at a music concert. What are you guys talking about? This girl was out there like she was at a fucking a headbanger's ball. You know what I'm saying? She wasn't fucking... She was moving her head. She was throwing outside leg kicks. She threw a high kick. She came in and punched the body. Clearly, she's not scared to get hit. When you're coming in and putting your face this close to someone so you can punch their body, oh, there's a good chance of the counter hook. Anything. They can just... Eat that face up. She did that against Josette, the number one head buster. She wasn't scared of getting her head busted. All right, guys. I digress. No, I don't. Because <laughs> we only we only went to Cyborg. I'm not I'm not singling Cyborg out. We got to do this real quick with John Jones, my favorite fighter, Daniel Cormier, the goat, the natty goat. Let's look at Daniel Cormier. Just so you guys know, I'm not picking on Cyborg or anybody. Let's look at Daniel Cormier. Tell me who your goat is. We're going to look them up too. Daniel Cormier, sure dog. Let's look at his third pro fight. Now, his is probably impressive because he was a fucking wrestler. Not going to lie. But let's look at his first pro fight. DC fought a guy that was zero and zero. It was both their... I've been singing this. When you get into a pro fight for the very first time, you usually fight somebody that also is fighting for their very first time. Your second and your third fight are usually against newcomers as well. 
please name any other men's or women's fighter not named Aaron Pico that has faced this level of scrutiny at the beginning of their career. From the beginning, everything they do is nitpicked and criticized. From the beginning, people are asking them for better competition. This girl was 0-0, zero and zero, and people wanted her to fight somebody that was 10-0. and 0. Literally, she was 0-0, zero and zero. she fought Brittany Elkins, who was 3-4. and four. You know what everyone's seen in that? Because they're hating, the Harrison haters, you know what they've seen? Oh, 3-4 and four record! Three and four record. That's all they seen. They didn't see zero fights compared to seven fights. That's not what they were looking at. They seen zero fights compared to three and four record. So how do you fix that? Whenever all all the haters can say is three and four record, what do you do next? You fight Josette Cotton with the eight and two record. Let's look at DC. Who did he fight in his second pro fight? Do you think they were eight and two? Do you think they were 8-2? and two? Motherfucker's still not 8-2. and two. This motherfucker's still sick. It's 2019 and he's still not 8-2. and two. Now, when he fought Daniel Cormier, still more impressive than a lot of these other motherfuckers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and 3. But who gave a shit? No one was watching. I've literally heard Harrison haters talk about her drawing numbers. Okay, oh, Harrison's is not a star. She only drew 200,000 viewers. Oh, she's not a star. She only drew 300,000 viewers. Why the fuck are we talking about somebody's free TV gate numbers in their third pro fight. How many viewers do you think there were for Daniel Cormier versus John Devine? Let's go to Conor McGregor. You know, let's go to fucking Conor McGregor. I don't know why they make me com compare Kayla Harrison with all these goats. But they do it. But they do it. I'm going to bring you guys on board. One, you know, one person at a time. You're going to realize and recognize this truth. You ain't going to just keep listening to the Harrison haters. It's not a good time for them. Let's look at Conor McGregor's third fight, right? Second fight, first fight. However the fuck you want to do it. Because anybody, you go to fucking anybody, any of your goats. Go to George St. Pierre. Go to fucking Matt Hughes. Go to fucking Daniel Cormier. Go to John Jones. Go to GSP. Go to BJ Penn. Go to Anderson Silva. Go to Chris Cyborg. Go to Amanda Nunes. Go to your on J. Check and see who the fuck they fought in the first three fights and how many fucking views they had. Because I bet you it ain't fucking with Kayla Harrison. And those are your goats, right? Fuck you talking about? Trying to find a dude that was zero and zero. How many views you think he had in that fucking fight? Let's look at his second fight. Who did he fight in his second fight? Oh, another guy that was zero and zero. Do you guys see where we're where we're fucking getting here? For the people that are criticizing Kayla Harrison for her first two and three and one fights. Do you realize none of your goats or none of the biggest draws have done what she's done so far? Nobody fights fighters with seven pro fights in their first fight. Nobody fights fighters with an eight and two record. I'll bet you she might be one of the only fighters on in the history of MMA. Very short list if there's anybody else that has fought and beat a fighter that was not only eight and two that had ten pro fights. I don't care if they were fucking five and five, four and six. That's impressive for your second pro fight. But when you're blinded by hate, when you're blinded by hatred, you don't get to fucking be objective. You don't get to be real about shit. So I'm glad I'm not fucking blinded by hate. Mixed power, team beige. Um, with that being said, I'm going to start a new YouTube channel. And we're going in on you motherfucking pure breed motherfucker. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have thought about that, guys. You guys know I low-key would love to be a comedian. I've thought about that. What is the word? Like, if you just hate fucking pure breeds, purist, 
All you motherfuckers that want to stay all white, all you white supremacists can suck my dick. And guess what? You black supremacists can suck my motherfucking dick too. All you motherfuckers are bad for the fucking cause. You guys, black supremacists, you need to go find you a white woman. White supremacists, go find you a black girl. And motherfucking, do what you need to do. Have a mixed baby. Fuck around and have uh, a bunch of big full times running around this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because that's where the pro. Okay, that's another topic for another day. You know, we gotta preserve our race. We gotta fuck you guys. You both need to be a little more tan if you ask me. You pure bastards. Is that hate speech? <laughs> I hope not. It's for anybody that's pure. All you motherfuckers can get it. So I said, please stop. All right. <laughs> All you motherfuckers can get it. Black supremacists, white supremacists, just supremely suck my motherfucking supremacist motherfucking nuts. <laughs> no, but that that is a good take. I don't give a fuck. If you are a supremacist, you are the problem. I don't give a fuck if you're white, black, are there Mexican supremacists, Asian supremacists? Fuck you all. Because y'all are the problem. This world needs to come together and be one. Fuck what y'all talking about. You nationalist, supremacist, motherfucking, racist motherfuckers. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm being half and half. White supremacists are racist, but guess what else? Black supremacists are fucking racist. If you're a supremacist, you're a fucking racist. This ain't what the show's about. Save that topic for another day. Let's get back to Conor McGregor's third pro fight, because I think this is really where the whole viewership argument comes to an end. Kayla Harrison, she only got... 200,000 viewers in her pro f in her fight. Do you realize Conor McGregor's the biggest fucking star to ever grace the fucking octagon today? M biggest MMA sold more pay-per-views, live gates, tickets, anything you can do as far as business. Conor's broke every fucking record. Now, look who Conor fought in his third pro fight. I don't even know when he fought this, dude. One, two, three, four... Five. Five and four. That was actually cool compared to what we've been seeing. Five and four. In his third fight, not his second fight, in his third fight, he fought a guy that was five and four. Now, this is Conor McGregor. This is the biggest pay-per-view salesman of all time. Just for you Harrison haters. How many views do you think were on the Conor McGregor versus Artemage Sitenkakov fight. How many views did Conor McGregor get? Do you realize how stupid it would have been for you to take that position? Let's say there was a me for Conor McGregor back in the day when he was 2-1 and one and I was like, yo, even though I don't know how it wouldn't have been because you wouldn't have had the same base, I, I've got two fucking gold medals and a driving motivation that is unmatched. I've got American Top Team, a full year of training on my side. I, there's a reason for my hype. There's not really any fucking reason you would have been hyping Connor up at 2-1. and one. But if you were, <coughs> could you imagine how dumb it would be if, if somebody was like, Oh yeah, Connor McGregor only had fucking 100 people watch his third fight. He'll never be anything. He's a hype job. Connor's a hype job. He only had 200 people watch him. That's because he's just starting. He's just starting. I'm telling you, aside from Aaron Pico, and he's in Bellator, but still, he's got the spotlight as well. But aside from Aaron Pico, there's no GOAT. There's no none of your favorite fighters. Nobody has had the pressure or the resume even of Kayla Harrison. Up until this point. Nobody in their first three fights. Fought a. Opponents with a combined. Let's see. Let's see. Her first opponent had seven fights. Her next opponent had. Or her third opponent had seven fights. And Josette Cotton had ten. <coughs> so. Kayla Harrison fought opponents. That all together. That was about 24 fight experience. Not counting amateurs. So in Kayla Harrison's third pro fight. Her opponents have combined fight experience of 24 pro fights. You can't find nobody. 
You can go through all of Sherdog, all of Tapology, all of UFC.com. You can look up all your goats, the GSPs, any any fighter you hold near and dear. None of them have done what Kayla Harrison's done to this point. So, I think the hype is justified. And if you watched her last fight, boy, goddamn, it's going to take something special to beat that girl. Now, now that that whole soliloquy is out the way, <laughs> let's actually get to the show, guys. <laughs> oh, let's get to the show. That's so funny. Let's pull up the chat. Terry Crow says, Mystic Mac. Oh, wait, I got to go way down. All aboard, says Benji. Kayla jumped right into the deep end of the pool and has been dominating. That's what I'm talking about. Jorge one says, one problem with Kayla, they about to dismantle 145 division, and Kayla's 155. Oh, that's no problem, because over in the PFL, they're about to have a 155-pound million-dollar tournament that she's going to take part in, and um, I haven't heard they're officially dismantling the 145 division like they are the 125, but I tell you what, if they do close it down, Kayla Harrison will be a good reason to bring it back up. I mean... The UFC, yeah, I haven't heard about that. They could, though. I mean, if you look at what they did with the women's tough show, doesn't seem like they've been investing into that 145-pound division. But that ain't Kayla Harrison's problem. Uh, UFC, if you don't have a division for Kayla Harrison, that's your fucking loss. That's like if Bellator got Conor McGregor or something because the UFC didn't have his division. Or, or it's like, okay, still going to be, you don't need the UFC to be a huge star. I don't feel like, not anymore. She can Go to Bellator. If the UFC closes their shit down and Bellator has Cyborg, I, I feel like that about, the same way I feel about Kayla Harrison and, and Cyborg or something, it's the same way I kind of feel like about Michael Chandler and, and Eddie Alvarez. I don't feel, I don't think it matters what organization the fight happens at. I think people are going to watch it. And I know that's damn sure the case for Kayla Harrison, because if you're a Kayla Harrison fan, you're not missing any of her fights if they're in the PFL, I've literally watched all three of her fights. And if they tell me the next three are in Bellator and the next four are in one, I'm probably going to watch them. So, I mean, it, it might be a problem with Kayla if her goal is to just get to the UFC. But also, as far as the 155-pound problem, she's for sure got 145 pounds in her future. That's her. She, she said, yeah, it would be tough, but she does feel like she can make 145. As of right now in the PFL, she don't have to make that cut. Which, ooh, that's even more that's more of a problem from Cy for Cyborg. Usually it's Cyborg, the biggest, baddest. You know, she's the one that can't cut down. Ooh, what about when hey the the it ain't too fun when the rabbits got the gun. It ain't too fun when the rabbits got the gun. When you're the girl then no one wants to come up to your weight class. How about this? You guys think Cyborg will go up to 155? Fuck it. Go wreck Kayla Harrison at her division. Hmm? Fuck it. If Kayla could. Now, I think Kayla can make the weight. Put her in there with one of these UFC nutritionist people that the scientific motherfuckers. Meal prep, all that shit. I think she can make the weight. I would, I should, but... Yeah, so I, I, I really don't see many problems at, ahead. GDR probably so mad backing down after that fight, says Mr. IWC. Man, that's, that's the mental aspect of this fight game that is so overlooked. You come into this fight hesitant and scared, and that means you're not going to be, you know, the aggressor. You're going to be scared to press the action with Cyborg. Amanda Nunes says, shit, someone's getting an ass whooping tonight, and it might be me. Shit, it's probably going to be me. But, if I just land one of these bombs that I know I got, whew, it could be a bad night for Cyborg. And salute to my OG, Dennis Espinosa, in the building. We talked about this on the panel. I kind of brought up the point how, you know, yeah, I don't give Amanda Nunes a huge chance to win this fight, but one thing she does provide and present that a lot of Cyborg's opponents haven't to this date is the power. She has some power and some skill. And Dennis Espinosa brought up the good point. He was like, well, 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 hold on now. Hold on now. We're talking about Amanda Nunez's power. Let's not overrate it too much. He brought up the point that 
Amanda Nunes wasn't able to knock out Raquel Pennington. You know, so, therefore, she doesn't have the power. And it was a fair point. It was a fair point. Because it was true. As far as she didn't knock out Raquel Pennington. But, it's not like Raquel Pennington came into that thing chinny. Raquel Pennington's a tough, very tough fighter. She can take a shot. So I don't know if it was fair to, and that will now hindsight 2020, clearly, to judge Nunez off that performance, you know, as far as her overall power. Because regardless of that, it doesn't change also the fact that Nunez is still stronger than Yana Kunitskaya. She's still stronger than all the girls Cyborg has fought in the UFC, Holly Holm, all these girls. So like I said, if she does clip her, and even if she doesn't knock her clean out like Jessica Andrade or something, if she rocks her, that's what it takes. That's what it takes. If she just rocks her to where she's on Queer Street, like doing the stanky leg or something, you got to just connect one more time. Boom. Now, if Cyborg's able to recover first, that's a real possibility as well. She recovers, clinches up to you, continues to beat your ass. But Nunez had that power. There's only one fight where hey one says Kayla versus Gabby. Gabby don't want that fucking smoke, bro. Gabby don't want smoke with Nunez. Gabby don't want smoke with Cyborg. She damn sure don't want no smoke with Kayla Harrison. I don't even know much about Gabby. Does she even fight, bro? Or does she just go over there and flex and her opponents fall? <laughs> I don't think I've watched her fights. <laughs> I can just see Gabby. <gasps> And her opponent's just, oh, just fall it out. I lose. <laughs> or does she actually, like, fucking ground and pound these grandmas with elbows? Chris was 160 on fight night. She could fight up a division easily. She could. But would it be wise? Now we're going to have to start talking about, you know, man, maybe the 145 weight cut just got the cyborg. Maybe that's what it was. Like, maybe, she, maybe, maybe the weight cut affected her chin and her stamina, you know, like... Something it had to be something. Leon Douglas is making one one fifty five a couple times now. May make cut into one forty five a little more difficult at first though. At first thought, yeah, it's gonna be difficult. I'm sure for anybody. I'm sure for TJ Dillashaw cutting to one twenty five is a bitch. But it's not like you look at Kayla Harrison like, hmm, where could she cut the weight? Like, fuck, dog. Like, man, I just don't see her being able to possibly lose any body fat and make it or change the diet. Like, I just. I've never looked at Kayla Harrison and thought, oh, there's no way she could go down to 145. Like 135, clearly out the picture. 145, but I think, I think she might be able to make it, man. Where he says, yes, Cyborg could go up. That's true. And Cyborg is now a free agent, and I doubt that douchebag Dana will resign her. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how that plays out for Cyborg. I really think, like we brought up on the panel, I think um, we discussed that Bellator would be an amazing option. I think our pit... Yeah, uh, I just think it'd be a great uh, option for Cyborg Bellator. They got the division. And honestly, bro, I just think it would be super dope because you get sponsors and coach. You know, he like he always supports WMMA fighters. Like, every month of his super chats, he gives to some WMMA fighter, you know, because they need the help with the camp and the training. And I would love to do that shit, too. And since he's got the W, I would do it for men's fighters. But I'm just fucking too broke. You know what I'm saying? Coach is more well off. He's got some money, so he can do that. But that's super dope that he does that. And I say that because now if Cyborg goes to Bellator, you know, Coach could get like a CSH Combat Sports logo on Cyborg for one of her fights. I think that'd be super dope if she went to Bellator. Other than that, she could like box once or twice. I'll tell you where she don't. Oh, oh my shit! I just thought about something, guys! Get right, Jorge One. Cyborg's a free agent. We know she needs the money. She's been fucking in bad. She's been in bad baby videos, and I don't give a fuck what nobody tells me. You ain't in a bad baby video because you like bad baby, unless you're one of her friends. <clears throat> that is a cameo, and that is so you can get some of her fan base. I took some marketing classes. Tell that to somebody that's stupid and don't know about target audience and fan base and shit like that. 
Bad Baby has a whole fan base of little girl, teenage girls, white motherfuckers, people that spend money, whoever you, whatever her fan base is, 14 to 18 year old female, whatever the audience is, I know what I'm talking about. Cyborg's getting, trying to get them eyes on her. She's building her brand. You are appearing in a Bad Baby video to build your brand and essentially make more money. So, as chat said, Cyborg could go up to 155, right? Guess who's having a million dollar motherfucking tournament? Ooh, you guys, <laughs> I just, I just laid it on you. Guess who's a free agent? I just laid it on you. Guess who's having a million dollar female lightweight tournament winner takes the title and a million dollars motherfucking PFL the professional fighters league sign cyborg boom what are we doing she's a free agent you got Kayla you got Ronda 3.0 bro if I'm cyborg I don't want to resign with UFC well, I do because I got to get that Nunes work back. I can't go out like that. Damn. Buck Bellator 2, though. <clears throat> if I'm a free agent around New Year's, and I know PFL is about to kick off all these million-dollar tournaments, I know who I'm applying at. And it's going to be fucking PFL, bro. That's what Cyborg can do. Okay, UFC wants to bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to PFL, win this belt, win a million dollars, and then maybe I'll come get that win back over Amanda Nunes. Because, boy, I need that one. <laughs> we need that. You cannot go out like that. Yo, I don't give a fuck, bro. You can't. If you're a Chris Cyborg, one of the greatest female fighters of all time, you can't only last three seconds than Ronda Rousey. You just shit on Cyborg Nation. I felt so bad for my guys and girls. That was one of the worst possible outcomes. That was one of the worst possible outcomes. Three seconds longer than Ronda Rousey, who had no head movement in the judo and... Oh my god, Ronda Rousey got so much humiliation in the head movement, head movement. Oh, Ronda Rousey could never strike. She was always a, she was always overrated. Oh, Ronda Rousey, oh, was she one of the biggest hype jobs ever? Oh, she's so overrated. She had no head movement. She could never strike. She didn't know how to throw a punch. Well, goddamn. You're going to tell me the GOAT only lasted three seconds longer than Ronda Rousey? Are you going to tell me that Ronda Rousey was only four seconds away from being the GOAT? Because seriously, what if Ronda Rousey lasted 52 seconds in that fight? Or what if Chris Cyborg got knocked out in 46 seconds? It was so close. Seriously, this is a real question. What if Cyborg got knocked out quicker than Ronda Rousey. That pretty much happened. She lasted three more seconds. But I I don't think anyone's going to address this. How can we give Ronda Rousey so much shit? Head movement is still a thing. People still talk, People still act like they literally act like if you've ever trained judo you cannot move your head. People seriously, to this day, it don't matter if you're a two-time gold medalist, it don't matter if you're a fucking man with MMA, that, that fights MMA and had a judo background. People actually feel like, oh, you, you trained judo? Oh, you clearly aren't going to know how to fucking strike or move your head. All because of Ronda Rousey. Now please, we got to take this one to hindsight. We have to. We have to look at hindsight in this one. Because Chris Cyborg only lasted three seconds longer than Ronda Rousey. And so what does that mean? What does it mean that Ronda Rousey got knocked out by Amanda Nunes in 48 seconds? It doesn't mean much. 
Ronda Rousey actually looks pretty good coming out of this thing, if you ask me. Everyone gave her all that shit. She's like, oh, look. Cyborg only lasted three seconds longer than me. Guess I'm not that fucking bad, am I? You cannot. I'm talking to Cyborg Nation. You cannot anymore trash Ronda Rousey. It's over. You can't. You need to actually retract everything you've said about Ronda Rousey when it pertains to her versus Amanda Nunes. When it pertains to head movement! Head movement! You've got to walk that back or you have to change your stance now. Because you can't talk about how bad Ronda Rousey is for lasting 48 seconds. And then in the same breath, talk about how good Cyborg is who lasted 51 seconds. There's not that much of a gap between Cyborg and Ronda Rousey if one of them lasted three seconds longer than the other. Leon Dubson says it doesn't mean anything. I'm sure you would like to believe that, but I disagree. How does that not mean anything? There's no way I can agree with that doesn't mean anything. Oh, Cyborg just got caught, but Ronda sucks. Like, what? No, with, with, with Cyborg, it was lucky, but with Ronda Rousey, it's because she sucks. What? You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't have it both ways. Either Ronda was a fucking beast who just got caught in there with Amanda Nunes the GOAT, or she sucks because she only lasted 48 seconds. But you got to keep that same energy with Cyborg. Is she a beast that just got caught, or does she suck because she only lasted 51 seconds with Amanda Nunes? But right now, Ronda Rousey and Chris Cyborg are pretty motherfucking even. Right now, they are pretty motherfucking equivalent. The only difference is the Holly Holm fight. That's the only difference. And styles make fights. Also, the mental aspect. Going into, we just talked about it. A lot of girls go into the fight with Cyborg and they're a little hesitant. They're a little scared. Holly Holm, when she went to fight Cyborg, she fought her differently than she probably would fight Ronda Rousey. Who do you think Holly Holm would be more aggressive with? Who do you think would allow Holly Holm to fight her fight a little better? Ronda Rousey or Chris Cyborg? So it doesn't fucking matter if Ronda Rousey got knocked out twice. Styles make fights. I tell you what, though, she only lasted, Cyborg only lasted three seconds longer than Ronda Rousey. So, not much of a disconnect there. So, I mean, this after this weekend is just crazy for what everything meant. Fuck, I feel like I've been on like an hour rant and we haven't even like talked about the main news topics for the show. But I don't care, that's really what this is about. Just talking some MMA with the fam. <clears throat> so... I think in that soliloquy, though, we covered the John Jones versus Gustafson fight. It's still bullshit to me. Still not rocking with John. Still, I, I honestly got a bad taste in my mouth. I don't feel good about John Jones knocking out Gustafson, even though in the first fight, you couldn't knock him out. The second fight, you fell a drug test and you knock him out. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, not, I'm just not going to be one of the people that buy that. Cyborg versus Nunes, boy, we've been talking about that. I couldn't wait to talk about this because it just means so much. We can't just sit here and act like this didn't happen. We can't just sit here and act like Cyborg didn't only last three seconds longer than Ronda Judo Rousey because that's where my vindication comes in with this whole motherfucking Kayla Harrison conversation. I get sick of motherfuckers comparing Kayla Harrison to Ronda Rousey in a bad way. Oh, she's not going to be able to move her head and she does judo. But nobody, nobody who compares Kayla Harrison to Ronda Rousey in that way will say, oh yeah, she's going to win the belt and defend it seven times and get in the Hall of Fame and become one of the biggest stars this sport's ever seen. Because Ronda Rousey also did that. Yeah, Ronda Rousey got knocked out, but she also took the sports to new heights. She also took the one that got that motherfucking belt and defended it multiple times. Multiple first round finishes. So is Kayla Harrison also going to copy that too? She going to fucking win that belt and make history? What are we talking about? Carlos Condit versus Michael Chiesa. Carlos Condit looked good but not good enough, man. Submitted by Michael Chiesa who was making his welterweight return or debut. Coming back up to welterweight. What, four or five fight losing streak now for Condit? Bad. 
day for Condit. I was rooting for him to win that fight. I didn't. He didn't have a good matchup. It was just like hopefully the little size advantage will help him. But yeah, Case is not a great matchup for Condit, and he pulled off the second round submission, got that dub. Corey Anderson, I thought looked great against Eli Latifi. I thought Corey Anderson was very impressive with that win versus Eli Latifi. For sure, moved into the top five spot. I think he kind of worked his way out of the. You just beat Corey Anderson or whatever the fuck DC said. You know, turned Corey Anderson into the meme. Um, but Corey Anderson just I thought he looked phenomenal against Eli Latifi, a really tough opponent. Chad Mendez, Alexander Volkanovsky, second round KO TKO from Alexander Volkanovsky. Chad Mendez retired. Crazy night was UFC 232, but yeah, man, nothing on the prelims or even on the pay per view mounted to the Amanda Nunes knockout. I mean, and then, of course, the John Jones Picogram shit. Mr. Perfect 2005 says, Condit needs to hang it up. I mean, the thing about the thing about it is, for me, for me, I don't think a guy needs to hang it up if he's just losing. Like, if you're getting your fucking eggs scrambled, like, when we have to start worrying about CTE, that's when we can talk about hang it up. Condit got submitted. The fuck? He got, like, submitted in three of his last five fights. He's not taking major damage. He's getting caught. If Condit's a blue belt right now, once he goes and gets his brown belt, this motherfucker might go on a seven-fight win streak in the UFC. I'm not really... I mean, yeah, maybe you guys think he needs to retire because he's not going to get a win, but I don't look at Carlos Condit like, oh, shit, he's slurring his words. Oh, shit. You know, oh, fuck, he needs to retire before something bad happens. I mean, now, he can retire... Because Carlos Khan is one of the smartest motherfuckers you're here that's a fighter. Sounds like a brain surgeon. He's watching like a UFC embedded. He was like, yeah, the extra micro fucking metabolites, they're so good. But when you mix them with this fucking supplement and this coffee and it fucking turns it into an extra monumental just vocabulary that we don't use all the time. This dude's really smart. So he can retire, but he don't need to in the sense of he's getting his fucking egg scrambled and his brain's battered. He just can't get a win to save his fucking life. But I, w I don't think he's going to retire, actually. I think we'll see another fight. BJ has a great career ahead of him, says Eric Smith. <laughs> Trolling a little. That's funny. Mr. IWC says, Conda is trash. Elite XXL says, Conda don't have that motivation, but he might just need a fire under his ass. Yeah. Might just not be, have that motivation, but yeah. We'll see if he can get it. I, I wouldn't be, if he retired, would I be like, no, Condit, don't retire! No, but I don't think, um, if he fights again, I'll watch it. It's not like, man, I can't believe, you know, it's not like I'm watching fucking Chuck Liddell versus getting knocked out at 50 years old. Walt Elite says, there's just something about Corey that I like. Yeah, no, Corey Anderson, I like him a lot, actually. They made him change his name. They didn't make him, but people gave him a shit. He kind of let, let the trolls get him. People gave him shit about his nickname. His nickname used to be Beast in 25-8. But after getting shit, he changed it to Overtime, which kind of means the same thing. But 25-8 really lets you know, motherfucker, I don't stop, and I won't stop. And if there was a tomorrow, I'd still be fucking working. I'm fine with the nickname, but I don't care. Great fight. Leon Dobson says, true full time. Carlos has looked good in his last two fights. That's the real bummer. But regardless of the improvement, he has still lost his last three. Actually, pretty sure he lost his last five. But either way, whatever he's lost, he, 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 he's he been actually getting sort of better. And if you listen to Chell Sonnen's video on the Condit versus Chiesa fight, he really breaks it down very well as well. He talks about kind of what you said, like, if you look at Condon, he's actually getting better. Like, if you think about it, he took a few years off, right? He took some time off and came back. And so, in his time back, yeah, he had to get the swing of things. You know, maybe a little ring rust, maybe just didn't go his way. But now, he's actually getting better and better in his fights. Did the result go his way? No, but he's still looking better progressively. And he's not getting just knocked out, brains blitzed, eggs scrambled. So, I'm fine with it. Bellator, says Tak Palma. There we go. See, he don't got to hang him up. He can go to Bellator. He can go to PFL, welterweight million dollar tournament. You want a million dollar? A one million dollars? Stamina says Carlos Condit, the natural born skitter. <laughs> oh. 
All right, guys, let's talk about some of the news we got for for the day. Um, just some of the topics coming out of uh, over the weekend, some current events. John Jones plans to fight three times in 2019 to satisfy his hunger that's raging. Man, I don't really care if I'm on the wrong side of this. Yeah, I'm sure you are going to be more active than you've ever fucking been when you're allowed to have steroids in your system because you told on somebody. Oh, like, yeah, like, seriously. You listen to the Joe Rogan, Jeff Nowinski, I don't feel any better. I, I, I get it. You want the fucking majority of fans to feel like you guys are credible. But, maybe you are in every other situation. This John Jones shit's not going to work. It's not going to sit right with anybody. Nothing about this works for me. Dana White said some shit like, oh, if John Jones throws another drug test, I'm going to kill myself. Why? We know he's going to fail more drug tests, right? Aren't you guys telling us it might pulse in his system forever? Isn't John Jones allowed to fight with picograms in his system? So shouldn't we expect him to fail more drug tests? Or is he conveniently going to be clean? Oh, look, his post-fight drug test was clean. Oh, look, his next two drug tests are clean. Oh, but here it comes. It's time to fight DC. Picograms are back. Oh, but it's okay. We already punished him. It's picograms. They're popping up from three years ago. It's still the same system. Man... I, this really, I don't even know what to think. What to, I just don't even feel good about this. I like really, I feel dirty. I feel like fighters are getting fucked over, and, and maybe I'm taking it too far. I just hate this shit, bro. Uh, I, I like the fact that you, Jeff Nowinski and the UFC, were doing their best to keep the credibility, and you know, even though John Jones was able to come back, okay, they explained it because he was snitching, and it's like, okay, that explains the shorter suspension. But that didn't explain him still getting allowed to cheat. They didn't come out and say he's still going to be able to allow to have picograms in his system because he's snitching. Like, literally, think about the criminal justice system. Drug dealers, the easiest thing. Everyone's seen fucking Narcos or whatever, your favorite fucking drug dealer movie, Cocaine Cowboy. Or maybe you've seen it in real life, some of us. But, if there's a drug dealer and he has a plug and the drug dealer gets arrested... And he comes back out of jail and doesn't do no fucking time. And his plug gets arrested. And he's still out here selling drugs. It's like, bro, what the fuck? So, okay, you snitch to get out on your guy. So the police are going to let you keep selling drugs? And I know it happens. But what the fuck? We're going to let you cheat because you're helping us catch cheaters. So what the fuck about all of his opponents whose careers are getting ruined? Now Gustafson, let's say John Jones was dirty. Maybe he could have beat clean John Jones, but we'll never fucking know. He don't get to be the champion now. He don't get championship pay because John Jones is helping you guys catch somebody. So fuck everybody else, clearly, but we already knew that. But the reason we're moving the whole event is because, oh, it wouldn't be right for John Jones. This shit isn't fair for anybody except John Jones. This shit isn't right. This shit isn't fair for nobody. Fans. Nobody except. What do you mean it wouldn't be right to John Jones? Well, the shit you're doing isn't right to fucking anybody else. This dude's just coming out here and bragging. At least be humble, you cheating motherfucker. At least. That's the least you can do is just give the glory to God and shut the fuck up. Why are you talking about people's wives and talking about you're going to knock motherfuckers out when you're on steroids? Why are you at the press conference disrespecting Alexander Gustafson and he's the only reason you're still on this fucking card? You should be thanking this man. Cheating motherfucker. Why are you... Bro. I'm not with John Jones on this shit. I'm not with the UFC on this shit. I'm not with none of these dudes. I'm on the other side. I feel like this is some bullshit. 
But John Jones, now he's coming. Oh, I'm going to fight three times in 2019. Are you, John? I don't fucking believe you for one. And if you do, it's because the fucking steroids are giving you extra endurance or some shit. That's where I'm at. For one, I don't believe you're going to fight three times. And for two, if you do, probably because you got some picograms in your fucking system. So, okay, John Jones, that's cool. You want to fight three times? Bro, don't bring your fuck. I don't even see. You, can't, you bring your family into it. And it's like, oh, but he's still got a family. And it's like, yeah, you, you, you know, that's where the human side comes out. It's like, this dude's got a family. You know, his mother just passed away. Like, I don't want to shit on the dude. But what the fuck, bro? When we're talking about this sport right now. He's on some bullshit. Floyd Mayweather knocked out Kenshin Nasukawa at Risen 14. <clears throat> Horaguchi Cat taps Darian Caldwell? I didn't see that result. What the fuck? Mayweather versus Tension, okay, whatever. I seen that. We'll talk about that in a second. But what the fuck? Horaguchi tapped Darion Caldwell? Jones was humble in his post-fight interview, so what's your beef full times as Leon Dubs? I don't give a fuck about his fucking post-fight speech. Give a fuck if you were humble one time throughout this whole process. What else can you be? Humble? You just got allowed to fucking cheat and knock somebody out. And you're only humble? What about the press conference? Okay, I get how he was selling the fight. He's not humble on social media when he's talking about Daniel Cormier and bringing his wife into shit. He wasn't humble... Uh, disrespecting Gustafson leading up to this fight. Oh, so what was your excuse for losing the first fight? Motherfucker, because there was no side. Like, I would have been on his ass. My excuse for losing the first fight is my excuse for losing this fight. You're a dirty motherfucker. Like, what do you mean? Like, John, John Jones was humble at one moment in this week. How can you, what's your beef? My beef is the fact that he's got fucking picograms in his system and he's failed every fucking drug test that he's knocked someone out since USADA. He's had three fights, knocked two people out, and failed two drug tests. Only fight he didn't fail a drug test, he didn't look good. Only reason he's being allowed to fight is because he's fucking telling on somebody. Or helping some substantial assistance. We don't know if he's telling on somebody. We don't know if he's what he's doing. He's providing substantial assistance. Not just, uh, oh, hey, by the way, guys, I think I think Turbinal might be a performer. Like, he's not telling them anything they already know. He's telling him some extra shit so he can, he's allowed to come out here and... What? So is this just going to be the John Jones show? So can a fighter just go snitch on somebody and start using steroids and win the belt? Seriously. Seriously. Who's going to be fighting for a belt next? Who's a title contender? I got a perfect example of why this shit don't sit right with me and what my beef is. Fucking, let's just use Jessica and Drudge. Let's say Jessica Andrade is about to fight Rose Namajunas. And she wants to win really bad because she needs the money. And she's been selling her fucking fight kit and her fight gear and, and, and baked goods to, to put food on the table. So she really needs this belt. She needs to be the champion. She needs championship pay. Her sisters are in the fucking NFL. Her sisters are already making millions of fucking dollars. She's broke as a fucking joke. So can she just go say, hey, Jeff Nowitzki, I got a feeling that this bitch is cheating. Or, hey, Jeff Nowitzki, I seen, Polo, I seen a video of Polo Costa two months ago on Twitter, and that shit ain't nowhere to be found no more. Why ain't he been fucking flagged yet? Can she just go snitch on somebody and use steroids and fucking knock out Rose like she did Carolina? Would you, would you say, what's your beef if she was humble? In the post-fight speech... Listen, I didn't, um, knocked her out Rose. She's still a tough com comp competitor. I know I failed my drug test, but all glory to God. You just ruined Rose's fucking life so you could, by snitching and cheating and getting to beat the system. She's not the champion no more. She don't get championship pay. And we're all supposed to have no beef. Because you are cooperating with USADA or what the fuck. John Jones is the only guy that gets this privilege. No one else. Let's take it to heavyweight. Steve Miocic, Daniel Cormier. 
What if Daniel Cormier failed his drug test, but was humble in the post-fight speech? Who gives a fuck if you're humble after you cheat? <laughs> what? You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, but it was only picograms. Please, just show me the other fighters that are allowed to have picograms and it won't be cheating. Yeah, but it didn't enhance his performance. How the fuck do you know? Because you saw the set it. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I don't care. Fuck that whole situation. I'm just, it doesn't sit well with me. Conor Mc McGregor reacting to the Floyd Mayweather um, Tension Nasukawa knockout. We're going to talk about that, but um, real quick, I also I also got to talk about Kyoji Horiguchi tapping Darion Caldwell because that's actually a, a, a really big deal. Um, in, in a sense, Darion Caldwell doesn't lose his belt, but for the people that don't kind of understand what why this is a pretty big deal, so Darion Caldwell is Bellator's Bantamweight champion. Phenomenal fighter. Beat some really tough fighters at, at Bellator. I think he's beat one, if not two of the... He beat one of the pit bulls, like Leandro Higo. Called out the other one. Like, he's actually beat some tough fighters at Bellator. Bellator's current Bantamweight champion. Well, Bellator allowed their Bantamweight champion, Darion Caldwell, to go fight at Risen on this night. And he fought against Kiyochi Horiguchi, former UFC fighter, of course. I believe he's fought Demetrius Johnson and, and, and other fighters. He actually is a good fighter. So, he tapped out Bellator's Bantamweight champion on this night. If Darion Caldwell would have got submitted in Bellator, he would have lost his belt. Since he got submitted in Risen, I don't think he loses his belt, but that's still impressive. Imagine Daniel Cormier going to Risen and getting submitted. And I say that because it's like, he wouldn't lose his UFC belt. But boy, you better put some motherfucking respect on whoever's name is over there that just submitted your fucking champion. Because none of these other bantamweights could beat Darion Caldwell at Bellator. He's a phenomenal wrestler, very talented fighter. Kiyoshi Horiguchi said, what's up? Boop, boop, click, click, check. Locked him up. <laughs> Allergies fucking with me. Stephen MC responded to Leon Dobson. Mr. IWC says, why would you give a rematch to someone who got destroyed? I mean, business. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, business is usually the answer to those situations. You know, that's, that's a conversation in the UFC that's had all the time. You just got knocked out in the first round. You don't deserve a rematch. Tell that shit to Cody Garbrandt. Tell that shit to Yoani on J. Check. It's all about business. Well, Jones was pissed at Bisping for asking him about PEDs. He said he cussed him out. Yeah, Jones didn't want to talk to Chell. He don't want to talk about Bisping. He don't want to talk about nobody that's kind of shining a light on this whole situation. Chell Sonnen, boy, I get that one. Chell Sonnen's on John Jones' ass. He's laying this shit out in clear detail. Even though he's giving John Jones some props low-key, he's laying it out here. Listen, guys, I got tested by USADA. I'm actually a professional when it comes to this. I've actually been called upon in the courts to testify, not testify, but to give professional, you know how the court calls in experts? Like, oh, here's our expert on fucking but butcher knives, you know, in this serial killer case. Well, they brought Chuck Sonnen in as their expert for steroids in a steroid case. Like, well, we have an expert who's actually been through this. It was Chuck Sonnen. So he knows what he's talking about on this whole John Jones and USADA mess. And he's been pointing out the inconsistencies. And he also predicted John Jones was going to fail another drug test because he said, you guys, people are missing this. But, like I've told you guys as well, John Jones, he never found the contaminated supplement. He sent in 12 bottles of creatine and muscle X, whatever the fuck your favorite supplement is. He sent it all in and tried to find a contaminated supplement. Here, I've been taking all 13 of these motherfuckers. None of them came back dirty. None of them had turban all in them. And so, therefore, it's like, so then how did you get it in your system? No one knows. Whole situation is funny. Um, but Chelsea Chelsea says, so, if we never found which contaminated supplement it was, then you would expect it to still be in his system. Because he's never found the contaminated supplement. 
testimony is just that weird guy. No, no, because I feel like testimony is almost like a, a snitching type thing. Like, if you give testimony, I almost feel like you're on trial. But that's not what he was doing. It was kind of like, you know, they call in an expert to help their case. He wasn't, like, testifying on nobody. He was actually, like, helping as an expert. Like, I think they paid him. Like, one of those situations. Michelle is elite level. I hope UFC opens up the atom weight division. Yeah, that would be dope. But, I mean, if they're closing down women's featherweight potentially i don't i haven't heard them doing that yet but definitely seems like it could be happening but if they're going to close men's flyweight and close women's featherweight i don't see them opening a lot more divisions except for if it's the middle ones let them take the meds brush just some juice not skill no 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 i'm sorry it's not the truth yeah clearly if somebody's taking steroids and they've never fought a day in their life they're not going to be able to fight but that's not what it is. You, you can't use John Jones and say, oh, well, even if he's taking steroids, it's his skill that's winning in the fights. Well, if that's the case, why is he taking the steroids for one? And for two, when you, yeah, if it's a level, okay, look, John Jones, one of the best fighters of all time. Daniel Cormier, one of the best fighters of all time. You've got two best fighters of all time that are pretty closely matched. Now, when you take closely matched fighters, and you give one of them performance-enhancing drugs, they're a little bit better. Because now, their performance is enhanced. It's not a level playing field anymore. You know, if you didn't need to cheat, you wouldn't be cheating. If you didn't need steroids, they wouldn't be in your system. When Brian Ortega failed his drug test on uh, his UFC debut or his second fight, you know what he said? I was trying to get an edge for like my second pro fight. I'm sorry. I apologize, it was an accident, I'll never do it again. Now, I do think he walked that back when he got toward his title fight. Like, wait, 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 I think it was like a diuretic. No, no, no. But the statement, when he first failed the test, he just ate that shit. Just took it on the chin. Ate the suspension, my bad guys, it'll never happen again. It was a big fight for me, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? He didn't say, oh, I was fucking in Mexico, and I was supposed to be eating steak, but they didn't tell me it was cabeza, so it was like horse, and so like, what? Horse meat. Um, Lily David has more women atom weight fighters than featherweights. Yeah, but, but they also have more opportunities, I think, outside the UFC. You know, with Invicta, they got their atom weight division and stuff. But no, I do agree. I would, I wouldn't mind the atom weight division. There's for sure. Um, there's for sure female fighters that could fill it up full time. What did you see in Floyd's growth as a fighter? I seen some dance moves. Uh, 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 he was hitting it. Uh, bow, bomb him. Uh, Mm, I liked that. Boy was getting jiggy. Da na 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 na. Get jiggy with it. Na 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 na. Oh, motherfucker! Bow! Bust your ass, dude is dancing himself over here, fucking like Kevin Lee doing the. Oh my god! Like he's trying to fall, but he can't get his fucking feet. Oh, he was like floppy. He was like a fish out of water over there after he got punched by Floyd. Floyd starts. Okay. Oh, you back? Bow! Bow! Motherfucker falling all over the place. That was easy work. You want some easy work? Point to the easy work then. That was the easiest work we've ever seen. And that does. Ariel Hawani had made a good point. That just makes you beg to ask the question. Just how good is Conor McGregor? You see what Floyd Mayweather did in there to someone who seemed to be an amateur? That wasn't happening to Conor. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Connor was on Floyd's motherfucking head for about four out of ten rounds. What are we talking about? Anyways, no, but I did, did that uh, Kyoji Horiguchi tapping Darion Caldwell. is actually very impressive. Um, Mayweather knocked out Tenshin Nasukawa. I think Nasukawa did last longer than Chris Cyborg, though. Pretty sure he lasted longer than 51 seconds. Wild. Let's move on to the next topic. Conor McGregor reacting to Floyd Mayweather first tension now Shukawa. He said that nine mil won't keep you on top of my list for long, kid. Hashtag Forbes Z. <laughs> Connor's coming for that number one spot on the Forbes list, man. He wants to be Forbes number one highest paid athlete. An old oh shit, son. It's a brand new year. Conor McGregor might start it out strong trying to take that top spot. He said, making $9 million ain't going to keep you on top of that list, bro. You better go back to making $100 million. 
you know, Floyd Mayweather was like, oh, $9 million for nine minutes. Highest paid exhibition fight ever. Connor's like, $9 million? So you're telling me you just got $9 million for a fight? <laughs> the fuck? That ain't, ain't going to keep you on top of the Forbes list. Who gives a fuck about being on the Forbes list, dog? I don't. I mean, I'm sure if once you got the clout, like, there's not really anything else to go for. Like, oh, now I'm going to be on top of a list. Motherfucking Forbes. What up? I ain't never dreamed about being on no motherfucking list in no magazine, bro. I'm trying to get my bills paid. What the fuck these niggas talking about? I'm on top of the list. Mm -hmm. What else did he say? He said something else, though. I think he did on his Twitter. Let's go. Let's take a look. See, at Conor McGregor's Twitter over cheer. Proper 12. Does this nigga got proper 12, 12 and, and, and some Cheerios in this cup, bro? What is in this cup? Some fucking peanuts, dog? Oh, Moet. I'm sure that shit's expensive. I've heard of Moet, so I'm sure it's expensive. You can't put proper 12, bro, unless I'm just tripping. I don't know if I'm tripping, tripping, or if I'm tripping, tripping, so let me know. Bro, proper 12 ain't no high-end liquor. I, it's more high-end than the shit that I drink, New Amsterdam and shit. Know what I'm talking about? Bro, that's just like $21 for a big bottle. Like, that ain't... That shouldn't be next to the Moet and the Ace of Spades and the Great Goose. You know what I'm saying? They be taking pictures of this shit like... You know, like they're... What? And that ain't even a shot, playboy. What the fuck are you doing? Sampling that shit? Better fill that motherfucking cup up. All right, I digress. I'm the one with the flamethrower, Leonard. Oh, he's responding to Leonard Ellerby. He said, champ, champ, with all due respect, I don't think you want that smoke again. I'm the one with the flamethrower, Leonard. Call me Elon. Your guys and got nothing but girl collection. And they can call him John. Slain. I think that was an Irish rap from Conor McGregor. I don't know. All right. Moving on, though. Dana White stayed on Conor McGregor. He said Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Conor McGregor rematch should happen in 2019. Gotta talk about it. Got to. Maybe it should happen in 2019, but I'll say this. Not first. Let Conor get a fucking rematch. I don't want to see Conor come out here and lose five fights in a fucking row because he never gets to get his bearings back. And then he's already dealing with the snake of a coach, John Kavanaugh. And I'm not, no disrespect, but I'm, what I've seen from John Kavanaugh rubbed me the wrong way, bro. How are you going to say you won't fight, you ain't going to go to war with Conor McGregor unless it's a big fight? That don't make you sound like you're saving Conor from himself. That makes you sound like a money-hungry coward almost. What are you doing? You trying to protect your resume, your legacy, yours? If Conor McGregor fucking calls you and says, Coach! I want to fight. I'm ready to fucking fight. And I'm not playing politics. I'm not waiting eight months for Khabib. I know y'all only want me to fight the big fights. But, bro, I'm trying to fight Dustin Poirier or Tony Ferguson because it's going to be a good fight. I respect them dudes. Let's fucking scrap. I'm ready to go to war. And John Kavanaugh's like, well, listen, Connor, I don't think I can do this one with you. you got to fight Khabib. It's the only fight that makes sense. Think about your health. I don't know. That's rubbing me wrong, bro. That's rubbing me wrong like the whole John Jones situation. What? Conor McGregor's coach is telling him he's only going to go to war with him if it's a big fight. It's a fight that gets you up. It's like he's trying to protect Conor from CTE or something, bro. Conor don't come out here and get his face boxed off. Conor's not slurring his words. What are you doing? We're acting, he's acting like Connor's 38 still trying to fight. This is Connor McGregor, not Connor Liddell, bro. And so you're, you're okay if he fucking goes in there and fights Khabib or Nate Diaz and gets his fucking egg scrambled, but you don't want to see him fight Poirier or one of these other dudes? Man, I don't want to hear that from my coach. If you are who goes to war with me, my A1 since day one, and I've been loyal to you, I never switched up, I never went to American Top Team, which I could have, should have, would have, I never went to AKA, coulda, shoulda, woulda, I stay here at SBG with these motherfuckers that can't buy a win? 
I'm the only motherfucker in this gym. Probably built this motherfucker. And I don't throw this shit in y'all's face like that. But what I'm saying is I've been loyal. Now you're going to tell me you won't fight with me unless it's for a million dollars or a big fight? Fuck that. I don't care if I want to fight for free, motherfucker. I need you in my corner. Another note for another day. But, yeah, I, so Conor McGregor's coach, he said some shit like he only wants to corner Conor in, in the bigger fights now, like, to protect Conor from his sofa. Like, you know, like, so this is a fight he would sign off for, but I don't want to see it first. I would rather see Conor versus Nate Diaz, um, Conor versus Poirier, Conor versus Ferguson, Conor versus Aldo, Conor versus Holloway. Uh, there's so many fights for Conor, I think, before the Conor Khabib fight. Um, and Dana White, though, he's looking potentially at booking that rematch. He said, I think a lot of people want to see that fight. We got to see how this thing plays out. Obviously, again, we haven't gone in front of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. That's got to happen, and when it does, we can figure out how this whole thing plays out. Is Max Holloway moving to 155? Tony Ferguson's obviously in the mix. We got to see how this plays out. He said, um, when pressed on whether the fight could happen this year, he said, yeah, I do. Obviously, guys are going to have to win, and it depends on how long the suspensions are. But, yeah, everything goes right. The fight should happen. Hey, that sounds about right. I mean, 2019 just started. Happy New Year, by the way, to everybody. I'm sure we've already said it, but if you haven't heard it. But 2019 just started, so... Conor McGregor will get a fight in. You know, they could fight again in, toward the end of the year, November, December, September, sometime around there. But as long as Conor fights somebody before then, I'm fine with it. And then and then I'm all things go for McGregor versus Khabib, too. Let's scroll down. Trey Young says, Conor needs American top team. Bro, you've seen what they've done with Kayla Harrison at 3-0. and no. I'm just saying. You know what I'm And see, this is the shit. Like, if... if, if Conor McGregor ever just gets starched. Like, what if he comes out and fights Nate Diaz or something and gets knocked out, and then he rematches Khabib, and Khabib knocks him out? It's like, people are going to talk about the fact that he stayed with SBG. That's a loyalty thing. You know, it's crazy, because you can't... A lot, a lot of times, you're going to... No matter what you do, you're going to um, contradict yourself eventually. Are you a person that says, oh, you should stay with your training camp that you've been with from the very beginning and never get better? Because that's the loyalty side of things. So if you praise loyalty and shit like that, respect loyalty, okay. So then you're probably not a fan of people like Amanda Nunes or, or if a fighter makes a move to better themselves. Kevin Lee, you know, whenever he lost his first UFC fight and went and trained with Extreme Couture, made the whole move to Las Vegas to take his fight career seriously. I look at that as a good thing, as you taking your career seriously and trying to become the best. I don't look like that as, oh, you fucking left your A1 day ones. Like You're trying to better yourself. Like, what? And Amanda Nunes, should she have just stayed, like, in Brazil and never became, like, and became, like, the next Betch Cohea? Or go to fucking American Top Team and become the next fucking Amanda Nunes, the GOAT. Is she not loyal because she's a crayonch? So does it, do you have to be a crayonch to fucking win two belts and knock Chris Cyborg the fuck out? Because if all you got to do is change your settings up to get where you want to be and where you've always wanted to be in fucking life, then I think more people need to become fucking crayonches. Fuck you telling me. I'm around these shitty people by way of that's just where I was born or whatever the fuck. You're telling me I should never better myself because of fucking loyalty? Bro, I gotta make a move on you, Nick. You know what I'm saying? Trey Young says Connor should work at Cowboys facility. Oh, that'd be a big year for the Cowboys next year. Cowboys going to the motherfucking lofts, though. They made they made it to the playoffs and the Eagles. Yo. Been back on my NFL shit this season. Last last four or five weeks. I'm ready for the playoffs. Where everyone says that that's why that Creante bullshit is bullshit. Yeah, I've always thought that Creante bullshit was just kind of selling the fight. It's never been something Oh, you crayonch. Like, okay. Sell the fight. But are you kidding me? She bettered her life. <laughs> You're gonna like her. <laughs> and honestly, like you know what I'm saying? It almost felt like some Donald Trumpish type shit. You know, like, and I know it's kind of weird, but, like, it almost felt like 
she's not a she's not a traitor because she was better than her. Like she's a traitor because she like left Brazil or something. Like that almost felt like some nationalist shit. Like oh, she fucking went to America. Fuck her. Nigga, we'll take her. That's the goat you're talking about. No, but um, it's okay not to get it. Says Stamina MC. <laughs> Yes, yeah, we don't want to see Connor spoon people, bruh. T. Trey Young says Connor and Ito time. Oh, yeah. What else we got, though? Chris Cyborg feels disrespected after her UFC 232 knockout loss to Amanda Nunes. So I guess they just pushed her out the cage, and I didn't notice this. But honestly, it was also, if you think about it, the UFC has been trying to get away from interviewing concussed fighters and fighters that just got knocked out. So it might not have been that they were disrespecting Cyborg. It could have been the fact that she just got knocked out. A lot of fighters, man, and I think it's just because the fighters, you know, sometimes they take shit, you know, personal. Um, and they get disrespected, you know, they're an ego thing, maybe. But a lot of fighters, oh, the UFC disrespected me. They didn't even let me talk on the post-fight speech. Uh, they lost. If you would have won, you'd have been all over that fucking microphone. There's time constraints, commercial breaks. There's all there's so much production and shit that goes into this. You don't know when this motherfucking show has to be wrapped up. You don't know if this venue's booked for midnight and we gotta be out of here at eleven fifty nine and it's eleven fifty seven, so we ain't got time. There's production and all type of shit. So we ain't got time to interview every winner and every loser. Sometimes when you get your shit cleaned up in 51 seconds, we don't got time to speak. Actually, you probably should have had more time. Our fight was only 51 seconds, Dana. Why can't I talk? <laughs> We're supposed to be here for 25 more minutes fighting. Okay. Bad example. But you get the point. Everybody don't get a post-fight speech, and they are trying to get away from fighters. Um, who are getting knocked out? Yosa Elsa, she was gonna praise Jesus, bro. Like John Jones, Hamdi Allah, all praise to God. Was she gonna throw in the Hamdi Allah? Was she gonna throw that one in there too? Low key, skiki skiki. Like motherfuckers, you guys didn't let me throw in my Hamdi Allah. Now my fucking Arabian fans are gonna be pissed, or my Muslim fans. They're gonna be pissed. That's business, man. I don't want to see nobody on no goddamn post-fight speech so they can fucking culturally appropriate fucking these people. That shit was weird when I seen John Jones go, I'm like, what? Cyborg, we know she's trying to grow her fan base. She's in bad baby videos and shit. So maybe she wanted to get her little Hamdiela off and she was pissed off she couldn't get it off. But no. It's, maybe the UFC was disrespecting her. No, with Cyborg, that could very well be the case. They haven't always looked out for Cyborg, and maybe they were disrespecting Steve and Miocic as well. And, you know, like, some fighters do get on the wrong side of the UFC, and they're not their favorites, right? They have their favorites. But it's not a skin color thing, I'll say that. Because if you look at um, Amanda Bobby Cooper, she's white, blonde-haired, and she got thrown at the fucking wolves. Steve Bimiotrich, he's white, not blonde, still disrespected. So it's not a race thing, but yeah, Cyborg might be on the UFC's shit list, maybe. Or it could have been because she got knocked out in the first round. Because, or not even just the first round. They have been trying to get away from fighters who get knocked out, interviewing them. Joe Rogan's made a big stance on it because the whole DC, you know, he got publicly humiliated because he cried because they interviewed him right after he got knocked out, and it became a thing. They're going to try and not interview as many much fighters that just got knocked out. So maybe that could have had something to do with it. I'm not saying that I know it did, but that could have had something to do with it. Cyborg said, they just kicked me out of the cage. I think it was very bad, very disrespectful, because I did a lot for the sport. I was supposed to say hello to my friend, fans and talk to them. Um, I think it's not right, but okay, they did it. It's already done. I can go on my media and talk to fans and say how I appreciate them, how they come to the cage and watch my fights. All of Cyborg Nation was here to watch me. I just feel like I was supposed to say something. Two Brazilians fight, two champions, and that's it. Um, she's like, yo... And and that's one thing, you know, she probably wanted to at least, like, put to rest the whole Brazilian versus Brazilian. She does, like, you know, she didn't want, originally, she didn't want to fight Amanda Nunes. And it's because she was scared. No, I'm just kidding. It's because she was Brazilian. Yo, if somebody wanted to go back and flip this whole narrative, like, Nunes might be the boogie woman. 
I'm just saying. Like, and I, it's so troll. It's so troll. I'm not going to go there. My boy Stam and MC would probably fucking punch his screen. But there are some trolls that say Valentina Shevchenko went to 125 because there's no, nowhere for her to go with Nunes up there. And now in hindsight, you could say it kind of makes more sense why Cyborg didn't originally want to fight Amanda Nunes. You know, no, it's because she's Brazilian. I don't want to make Brazil cry. You know what I'm saying? Like, at first it was Cyborg who didn't want the smoke. Was she ducking? No. But there's probably going to be a troll that says she was. Remember? Cyborg didn't want to fight Amanda Nunes in the beginning. She knew what was going to happen. Okay, that's that's too far. But still, Cyborg did not want to make Brazil cry. You know, maybe she wanted to address her Cyborg Nation and the fellow Brazilians. Like, listen, Amanda Nunes is the greatest fighter of all time. I know I called her a crayonch leading into this fight, but she's a great Brazilian champion. She's actually not a crayonch. I was selling the fight, you guys. You know, a lot of fighters do that after the fight. Like, no disrespect. I was just selling the fight. I don't actually think she was crayonch. I know that was kind of bullshit. But, respect to Amanda Nunes, and maybe we can do it again sometime. But yeah, a lot of people don't get interviews after they lose. But champions, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Especially, yeah, no, no, no. Oh, like, a lot of times they don't. A lot of them don't want to, right? Like, sometimes you do, but yeah, sometimes you don't. Elite XSS is full-time, still going in. She lost twice, working Shevchenko go. 125 is good. Full time. Any thoughts on Kayla? <laughs> next topic. Let's go, Jorge One. You know what the next topic is? PFL 2018 World Championship results. Kayla Harrison runs through Muriel Sharneski to improve to 3 0. But if you want the whole Kayla Harrison diatribe, you gotta tune in earlier in the show because any of your goats ain't fucking with Kayla Harrison. If you thought it was hype before, Tune into the beginning of the show because it's nothing but reality. Nothing but reality. There is no Harrison hype. There is a Harrison reality. There is a future of WMA that has Kayla Harrison's name engraved in it. Whether you like it or not, she will be in the Hall of Fame. She will be a future all-time great. I don't give a fuck if she ever fights Cyborg or not at this point especially. Before, yeah, to be the GOAT, the greatest ever, you had to beat Cyborg. But now to be the GOAT, the greatest ever, you got to beat Nunes and their teammates. And so that might not happen. Unless Cyborg, if Cyborg wants smoke, sign up at the PFL. Go in the 155-pound, million-dollar division and show Kayla Harrison you want all the smoke. Do it. What's, what's stopping you? It ain't the 145 belt, because you ain't got that no more. So go beat her while you can. And I'll tell you, this is Cyborg's time. You better pounce on this opportunity like the lioness. No pun intended. Okay, every pun intended. You better take this opportunity. Cyborg Nation, I need you to go to Cyborg's Twitter and tell her, go to PFL, go to PFL. If you ever want to beat Kayla Harrison, now's your time. You better hope that you fight her early in the tournament. If you let Kayla Harrison go through this whole lightweight tournament, win the million dollars, win the belt, oh, bad news, because then it's going to be, mother, it's going to be 2020. It's going to be time, 2020. And you don't want to see Kayla Harrison in 2020. So Cyborg's best option for right now is to be sign up at PFL, call Ray Cepho, yo, I want to fight for a million dollars. I want to be your lightweight champion. Chris Cyborg. You got to go to PFL. And then maybe you can catch Kayla Harrison when she's 5-0. and Maybe then you can catch Kayla Harrison when she's 4-0. and That's what it's going to take. So, Kayla Harrison dominated um, on the 31st. Moved to 3-0. and Very impressive opponent. I don't give a fuck what no Harrison hater says. I went through earlier in the show why all of Kayla Harrison's opponents, not not just Brittany Elkins, not just Josette Cotton, and not just Moriel Sharnesky, there are way more impressive opponents than you fucking Harrison haters give her credit for. Nobody, no goats, 
No Conor McGregor's, no Ronda Rousey's, no John Jones, no Daniel Cormier, none of these fighters. No Chris Cyborg, no Amanda Nunes, none of these fighters have had the pressure or the spotlight that Harrison has had on her for her first three fights. And somebody, oh, who cares about the spotlight? Oh, that don't, that's her fault. Okay, 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 okay. That was just the beginning of the point. And none of your goats, none of the all-time sellers of ticket sales and whatever you want to judge Kayla Harrison off of her views, nobody that's getting Conor McGregor. No one gave a shit about his third pro fight. No one gave a shit about his second pro fight. You want to talk about your goats? John Jones, Daniel Cormier, George St. Pierre. No one gave a shit about their first fight, second fight, third fight. And oh, by the way, guess who they were fighting in the first fight, second fight, third fight? They were fighting newcomers. Kayla Harrison hasn't fought one fucking newcomer yet. She ain't got no padded record. She ain't fighting newcomers. Zero and zero. Two and eight. She's fighting motherfuckers with amateur experience and pro experience. Three and four. Is it a winning record? I don't give a shit. Add it up. What's three plus motherfucking four? Seven. That's seven pro fights. Look at John Jones' first fight. He fought against someone that was 0-0. Zero and zero. Daniel Cormier fought against someone that was 0-0. Zero and zero. That's zero pro fights. That's a newcomer. Kayla Harrison fought someone that had already fought seven pro fights. Next fight, she fought someone that was 8-2. A winning record and 10 pro fights. 31st, she fought somebody that was 3-4 and four with 11 amateur fights. But seven more pro fights for your ass and 11 amateur fights to throw on motherfucking top. It don't happen like that. With the eyes. With the attention. With the pressure. Nobody. Men or women in MMA has done what she's continuing to do dominantly. So Cyborg, you might want to go say what's up. While you still can. Because once hey, Kayla Harrison has them hands, oh shit! Once Kayla Harrison has them hands, them American top team Amanda Nunes things, y'all ain't thinking! Think about it! Think who she's training with! This was a better scenario for Harrison than could have happened! Because now she trains with the girl that knocked Cyborg out in 51 seconds. That's worse for Cyborg. You better go and get Kayla Harrison now because 2020 Cyborg don't stand a chance. I'm sorry, guys. I was at a point. I was on the point to where I was like, okay. You know, I was trying to give credit to the Hayless Harrison haters, Kayla Harrison haters. Okay, because I was just trying to get some reality out of them. I was just trying to get them to be a little level-headed, a little objective, just some objectivity, any objectivity. So I said, listen, guys, you're missing the point. Even if Kayla Harrison loses to Cyborg, she can still be one of the greatest of all time. They're missing the point. Is Daniel Cormier a hype job because he lost to John Jones? No, he fucking smoked everybody else. Like a blunt at Full Time's house on 420. He smoked them. Puff puff passing on these motherfuckers. He ain't a hype job. If Daniel Cormier is not a hype job, Taylor Harris is not a hype job. I went there. I mean it! And that was if she beat everyone. What if she beat Megan Anderson? Beat Holly Holm? Beat fucking... Oh, there's only two flip featherweights? <laughs> oh, looks like she's one of the greatest featherweights of all time by default. Now all she's gotta do is beat some bantamweights up. Well, she's clearly... That's no... That wouldn't even be... Come on, man. That wouldn't even be fair. A Bantamweight versus Kayla Harrison. Let Cyborg fight the Bantamweights. They don't want no smoke with Kayla. But she already had a full year of training with American Top Team first she turned pro. Now she's about to have a full year of training with not only American Top Team, but Amanda Nunes. 
Eek. If you're cyborg, you gotta fight this girl while you got the chance. You wanna talk about power? Nunes ain't got the power that Kayla Harrison has. You wanna talk about the grappling? They're real close. But with that size and strength, Harrison might have the edge. If Kayla Harrison does nothing but train striking with Amanda Nunes for this whole year, that'd be a 50-50 fight for me. But either way, we're gonna, we, we talked about Kayla Harrison and, the, and everything enough on the opening soliloquy and all of that. So if, you, if you're interested in hearing the reality and coming to the light side because Harrison haters are on the dark side, you're on the wrong side. You're on the wrong side of history. I try to tell people, you can keep hating. You can wait until the seventh fight. You can wait until the ninth fight. Eventually, you're going to have to give up some credit. Now, I'll, I'll, I've been here the whole time. And what does that mean? Nothing. But I'm just looking at this as objectively as I can. Lolita David says, Harrison does have more than an edge. Oh, yeah. More than an edge. Man, training with... You'll see. I mean, we're just kidding. Kayla Harrison will continue to run it up. And if Cyborg don't want to sign up at the PFL, then 2020 is going to be a bad year. But we'll see what happens. A lot has to play out, man. I can't wait for this PFL lightweight tournament. Um, If Cyborg's in it, holy smokes, I, I, that, that would just blow my mind. PFL should be doing, and if they want to protect Kayla, maybe not. But boy, if I'm Cyborg and I'm a free agent, and I know they're about to have a women's million-dollar lightweight tournament, I know I'm trying to sign up. If I'm Cyborg, I'm going to sign up for that million-dollar tournament. Oh, by the way, we talk about how the big girls don't have a place in MMA. Cyborg wants to make people put respect on the featherweights and, you know, the bigger girls in MMA. Go help bring in that lightweight division. Go use your name and... Your bad baby selling power and your new fans from that whole little cameo. <laughs> and take them to PFL. The UFC been disrespecting you? Letting the crayonch beat you in 50... The UFC just let a fucking crayonch knock you out in 51 seconds. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck that, man. Go put that shine on, on the PFL lightweight tournament. Let these people know. I can't wait. I can't wait for 2019 MMA. Oh, come on! I don't even know what this shot's going to be, but I got to watch it. I'm taking that risk. I need to see some Kayla Harrison action. Look at them hands! Hold on! No, 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 no! What are you talking about? Don't act like she's not throwing that jab out there! What? What? Don't act like she's not throwing that fucking jab out there! What? What? And right off the bat, Charnesky going with the Look at the knee! Oh, you're going down. Boom! Nice headlock. Fucking melt! <laughs> ah! Y'all don't know what we're seeing right now. Greatness. We got a couple more things to talk about, guys, and I got to get the hell out of here. All right, guys. Corey Anderson lays out his case for the title shot. John Jones responds. He says, if Glover beats Corey... I'll put him in line for a title shot. I beat him. A win at UFC 232 for Elir could argue he's next to fight for the title. I beat him. Anthony Smith beat Shogun Rashad, who came up 185. His only top 10 for Vulcan O. Gus just fought. Jan Blahovic, this nigga is laying his case out for real. He's literally going through every single person and letting people know. Like, I should get the title shot over this guy because of this, this guy because of this, this guy because of this. Stem, she says, not nuts about those hands, but that transition to mount was madness. I mean, you ain't got to be nuts about her hands because that's not her background. But to say that she don't have any head movement or any hands to completely disregard her hands would be the mistake. You don't have to be nuts. You don't have to think that she's a great striker. You don't have to think she's an amazing striker. But to say that she absolutely cannot and will not ever be able to strike, you are wrong. This may be my favorite full-time live show by far. I'm lit. Motherfucking lit. Let's go. You cheered me up full time, says Leon Dobson. That's what we do for the family. Y'all are the family. It's good. Appreciate that. I'm him and Leon Dobson. Glad I could help. 
Jan Blachowicz has only one has only beat one top ten guy. I ate him alive. Kerry Anderson ain't fucking around. I mauled Pat Cummins, always getting descriptive. I mauled Pat Cummins when he was in the top ten. I've got thirteen fights in the two or five division. Yes, I've got losses, but I've been battling all ranked opponents since my third fight in the UFC. Who else is on a three fight winning streak in twenty eighteen against all top ten guys? Only one of my losses was a non top ten guy, John Vellante. It was my fifth fight ever in 2014. And we all know they cheated me on that fight against Shogun. Granted, it was one of my worst performances. I don't finish, or what? Yeah, I don't finish, but I dominate and win. Smith doesn't deserve or want that fight. He's just trying to talk his way into a payday. He was a punching bag against Vulcan till he got tired. Well, we might need to see Corey Anderson versus Anthony Smith. The way we're talking. Because right now it sounds like you're trying to talk your way past Anthony Smith. If I'm not mistaken. Don't call Anthony Smith out for talking his way to a title shot and then not call him out. You know what would have made that way better? Anthony Smith is trying to talk his way into a payday. I should get to fight for the title first off resume. Or Anthony Smith should have to fight me. Or I should fight Anthony Smith for a number one title eliminator. But Corey Anderson tagged John Jones and said, John Jones, what the F people was talking about? I'm your Huckleberry. Everybody else is booked, and Smith hasn't earned his stripes. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. John Jones for Anthony Smith, I would fucking just die to see. I would die to see it. But Corey Anderson probably does have a better case to the title. I mean, especially when he lays it out like that. You could argue it, but his resume has for sure been more impressive at light heavyweight. Remember Anthony Smith coming up from middleweight. So at light heavyweight, Corey Anderson's resume um, is way more impressive, I feel like. And I like his case to making the title shot. I think he deserves the shot. But also, fuck it, Corey Anderson. I mean, if we got two guys who think they're next for the title, you know how we can solve this, right? Corey Anderson versus Anthony Smith? I am in. Oh, I would love that fight. So, I mean, maybe that happens. But Corey Anderson laying it down, though. I like this. I, I'm really impressed with Corey Anderson. I mean, the fight and even this call out. I mean, just I'm just extremely impressed with Corey Anderson re recently. Definitely got my eyes on this guy. And I think he deserves a title shot. Woo! Y'all thought I was fucking hurt? What the fuck are we talking about? Let's motherfucking... What? What? What the... What? Let's go! We, we're switching motherfucking hats! Man, what, what? It's backwards! We don't give a... What? Yo! Y'all thought we was hyped? UFC Kansas? UFC and now I'm ending the show on this topic. Well, y'all, you know what? We're going to... I can't save it. I already started. What's next? Man, we ain't even talking about Jimmy Smith today. We're ending the show right here. Jimmy Smith didn't get re-signed by the UFC, unfortunately. The evil Joe Rogan, the guy that kind of looked like Joe Rogan, came from Bellator. He ain't re-signed. He's gone. He might go back to Bellator. That ain't important right now. Salute to Jimmy Smith. He was a great commentator. Holy shit. The UFC's coming to Kansas. What? March 9th? 21 days before my birthday? What? I'm, I'm a, I already talked to my pops like, Hey, pops, I ain't had work these last couple weeks, but I know you be out here scrapping metal, you know, like... I'm about to learn how to, uh, well, he's got the truck, but I'm, I'm about to be with him. I'm about to be like a, a scrap metal intern for the days I don't got work. I'm going to be out here looking in these alleys for metal and all type of shit like that that I can scrap and make like 50 bucks because I'm saving the fuck up for UFC Kansas. And I need enough for me and my girl, and I really want my brother to be able to go, bro. I'm, I'm fucking, I'm in there like swimwear. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I can't even. Like, Kansas recently got a new arena. And, and the place where I was born and raised is only like an hour away from me, give or take. <coughs> and they've been having a lot bigger shows. Music acts and shit. And the fucking UFC's coming. This ain't no Bellator Mulvane. This ain't no, you know, Invicta Kansas City. This is UFC Kansas. I'm not missing this, you guys. There's no way there will not be a fight companion that night unless we're doing it live from the show. 
I'm hyped about this shit. That's my goal, my motherfucking mission. My first live UFC event ever is going down. And so, with that being said, there's no main event yet. There's no co-main event. There ain't even a prelim announced, and I'll be there. It says, um, UFC has announced their schedule. April 20th, there's a UFC on ESPN Plus on 420. Oh, shit. Get Nate Diaz. Nick, Nick Diaz. Sean O'Malley on the card. What are we talking about? The UFC is coming to Kansas. <clears throat> During Saturday's UFC 232 broadcast, the promotion announced its second quarter schedule for 2019, as well as confirming the first ever trip to the Sunflower State. The mother... What y'all know about the Sunflower State? Not shit. <laughs> because nobody does. No bouts were officially announced for the card. Hey, I don't care, man. That's 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 what's on the bottom of the screen. We got a goal. I don't, I don't care if the family donates or not. You don't have to. I'm not in this. I don't want to grow the channel. I don't care if we get no more subscribers. I don't care if I get no fucking donations. That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to talk some fucking MMA on just every other day or, you know, and, and rock with the family. This YouTube shit over, what's it called? Overrated, especially 2019. 2018, 2019, YouTube is not what you want to be doing. Leave that for the big dogs. You know what I'm saying? Unless you just, like I said, if you're just rich and you ain't got no bills to pay or nothing to do, feel free. Hop on YouTube. But this shit is for the birds, bro. You put 80 hours a week in and make like $130 a month. <laughs> it's not where you want to be. So um, with that being said, I, I'm going to be rocking here. But if you guys want to watch some live coverage with me or, or help me go to my first live UFC events ever. Any donations that come from now until UFC Kansas, the next three months, I'm saving up so I can go to this fucking event. I can't wait. It's just going to be so fucking lit like today's stream. So with that being said, I'm going to pull up the chat and we're going to get out of here for the day. Got some shit I got to go do. Full-time fam checking in. Royal pain in the building. We can donate you tickets for the content. Absolutely. Put up a link. Get up a full-time ticket link. That's what I'm saying. <clears throat> but the thing about the, the tickets is, I don't know how many people are going to be going with me, because I know my dad wants to go, So, um, and my brother, you know, if they can afford it at the time, which my dad should be able to, you know, now he's doing a little better. Um, but me and my girl, so, you know, I, I got to make sure, like, if I'm going with five people, I don't buy, like, two tickets here and then two tickets here, because I don't know how the seating works, but we're clearly going to have to be sitting together. So, like, we might have to buy our tickets at the same time. I really don't know how this shit works at all. I don't know if you have to buy your tickets together or nothing like that. But tickets aren't even on sale yet. <clears throat> tickets don't go on sale until January 19th, I think. So, like, two more weeks, tickets won't even be on sale. Your rants are so entertaining, bro, says Mr. IWT. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I don't even be trying to rant. I should be trying to fucking defend my belief. Like, what? But I do appreciate that. Yep, you have a great one, homie, says Mr. Perfect 2005. Corey Anderson had a good night. Let's see if that dude with win another match. Corey Anthony versus Corey, then title. I'm with you, Trey Young. Anthony versus Corey, I love it. Have a great one, homie. We should donate to the cause, bro. I'm down. Hey, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't. It is what it is. I know a lot of y'all are probably as broke as me, negative bank accounts. And some of you, even if you ain't, you work hard for your fucking money. And if you work hard for your money, you ain't going to be donating it to some motherfucker on YouTube sitting here and talking MMA. I completely understand it. So it is what it is. If you can help, if you want to help, much appreciated. If you can't or you don't want to help, it is what it is. You're still my motherfucking dog. Investigate the ticket sit to from early. I don't know what sit to is. Um, call the venue and see what they can tell you about how it all works so you don't get caught out when they go live. Uh, Full-time MMA. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. As soon as the t I'll do that. Just get more information pretty much like how does like if I want to come with five people. Will we all be together? Is it like an NBA game or something where like you have a seating section? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get that information because I've never been to one of these, so I'll need that information. So yeah, I appreciate you guys for coming through and watching the show. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Like your middle name is Khabib. Don't be a baby back, bagel biting bitch, boy or girl. It is what it is, man. Let the full time family know what you think in the comments. Subscribe to UFC Yankovic too. We out.